his first start has not been going in the treble on a high percentage, so I don't expect it to. Well, it's found a treble, Rod, but not, oh, um, not the one he wanted. Now, would you go two double eight or stick with it? Two double eight. Well, he's gone double nine. He's gone double nine again. Ooh, and at the third time of asking, Joey Cullen gets over the line. Looked to be cruising at one stage when he led 3-1. And it's big Andrew Gilding versus even bigger John Henderson as these two duke out in the first round looking to book their place in round two to face the number 12 seed, the raging ball, Terry Jenkins. Dan Dawson in the commentary box for this one alongside me, Rod Harrington. Well, we've got two distinct characteristics of these two players. The rocker, John Henderson, and he gets the rocking motion going well. And he's really hard to beat, to be quite honest. Hits a lot of 140. It's never a big 180, but Andrew Gilding. I want to see the thumbs up. <laughs> I want to see the thumbs up so our cameramen be on your toes. We want to see a 180 from Andrew. And the little thumb, just to decide. Occasionally he gives it the double thumb. He That's does. a red letter day when that happens. But he, he was really playing well, wasn't he? I mean, just lately, he's gone off the boil a little bit. He, he has done, although he did, he did have a little run to a, a semi-final in uh, Coventry a month after the UK Open. The UK Open was when he really, really, I mean, he was tearing people apart. There was probably only one person that could have beaten him that weekend, and he ran into Michael Van Gogh and in the semi-final. He averaged 108 and still lost. But it's not quite been that consistent level of performance. But when he does hit a bit of form, Andrew Gilding can mix it with the very, very best. Yeah, you're right. He is a tough competitor, and, and so is John Henderson. I mean... He had a, a great run, I think it was in Venray. It was uh, actually, it was in Thank Munich. The German I knew yeah, I don't worry about that, that, Rod. I'm making my business. Oh. I've forgot my glasses, so all my paperwork here I can't see. That's fine. Yeah, it was Munich where Big John Henderson he made it to Munich, the final. Yes. And he lost 6 5 to Michael Van Gerwen, as everybody was doing, losing to 55. MVG in the first four European Tour events of the year. That reign of terror finally came to an end. In the last European Tour event. Yes, it's going to be interesting with Michael because he, he lost to uh, Benito mm -hmm. and then he lost uh, in Japan. So yes, the last did. two tournaments he's lost, you know, and that, and that just puts you a little bit as on the back foot, as we say. So it's going to be interesting to see what Michael Van Gerwen's going to turn up this weekend. He wants to get right back on the horse, as they say, get the winning streak back. Yeah, you've got to bear in mind that Michael Van Gerwen, leading up to those two tournaments, was winning more than half of the tournaments he was entering in 2015, 16. which is a quite phenomenal run. But he, he was playing brilliant, but he's also having a little bit of luck. In, yep. You know, when you talk about Dubai, I mean, he was behind in all three of those matches and possibly could have lost them. Um, but didn't, just got over the line. But all of a sudden, your, your little bit of luck that you need, no matter how good you are, you've got, got to have that little bit of run of luck. And perhaps that's deserted him a little while, for a little while, so we'll see what he does this weekend. Yeah, Michael Van Gerwen does join the action along with the rest of the seeded players tomorrow, entering in the last 32 stage. He's going to play the winner of our last game on this evening. That's Jamie Lewis, the young Welshman, or Michael Rosenau, the German, is gilding. There we have it. Did we miss the thumb or didn't he do it? I don't think he did it. Have Which to have is worrying word. time. It is worrying. We're going to have to have a word with him about that. I'm sure we'll see it before the end of this one. Now Andrew, Andrew Gilding Andrew looking at double 14 yes. here. To get a first leg on the board. A bit close to the double 11, that. Down for double 7. Game and he gets it. 1-0 Andrew, Andrew Gilding. Gilding. And that is perhaps significant because the only time these two have met was in Munich when Big John Hendo made it all the way to the final, and he destroyed Andrew Gilding 6-0. Not many people average. have done that. Mm. Yeah, the Andrew Gilding 6-0 with 102 average, then he was even better in seeing off Adrian Lewis in the next round. Hit 107, 108. Are we going to see something similar from the Highlander this weekend? Oh, this looks good. That looks pretty good. 
in sync is the rocker. It isn't the throw that you would teach any youngsters, I have to say. The grip is just like everybody else's grip. Nothing wrong with it at all. But uh, Peter Manley's the only other one that Nine used to have a bit of a, a forward motion. I remember an American called Scott LaRue that was a lot worse than, or better than Big John. I mean, really did. Basically walking to the hockey and yeah, throwing it. He's he like did, the happy yeah. Gilmore of darts. Yes, he was. Yeah, Scott LaRue. Never forget it. I played him once and I thought, yeah, this is easy, and he battered me. <laughs> I can't remember much else, but I remember him battering me. I'm sure he remembers it well as well. Now, Gilding has left himself the 170. Henderson needs to find a treble, 50. not that one. Andrew, you so the Gilding may well get six starts from here. Could do it in three. It's on. No longer. Well, I was going to say the 25 is a good shot here because uh, he'll come back for double top. But he's going to come back for two at double top. And that previous visit from Big John has, could have cost him this leg and a break of throat. So, tops for Gilding. You see, Gilding so far over 35. on the left-hand side. In fact, Hendo's so far on the right. They could Andrew both actually Lennon. stand at the hockey at the same time, and that's saying something considering they are both rather sizeable. We could actually commentate in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Set a little table up there. And that's a bad dart from John. And another bad 25. dart. He really hasn't done anything. I mean, Andrew if Andrew goes and misses 20. this, Big John may only get a dart at the bullseye. Game well, he doesn't miss it, so it's 2-0 to Andrew Gilding. Andrew to first. Game on. Yes, and a break of throw for Andrew Gilding. And that looks perfect for... Oh, we've got to have the thumbs up here. One hundred and forty. Just the ton 40. Henderson, got to find his range. 100. Both of these guys coming through the qualifiers, as did everybody you're seeing in action today. Gilding Soft, Gary Stone and Andy Bolton. Only dropping five legs in total. Henderson, the mile-high Mark Hilton and Kirk Shepard. Qualified for Risa on the same day, but he didn't get very far. Ended up losing out to Matt Clark. Yeah, it's all a bit scrappy with Hendo at the minute. Certainly not hitting the heights we saw from him on the European Tour early this year in that brilliant run to the final. Did have a quick word with Hendo earlier on. Reminded him that he played Gilding on that brilliant run. His best run on the PDC by some distance. And... He said, yeah, well, I could do with something similar. Nice little run this weekend going into the match play, wow, seeing as I've got a pretty tricky draw. First round, Phil Taylor. Man unbeaten in seven years at Blackpool. Pretty tricky, you could call that. <laughs> and playing exceptionally well. Played really well in Japan, did Phil. Well, he's going to be tough to beat in Blackpool because of the legs. He'd have a better chance of beating Phil over sets, but uh, legs, his leg on leg pressure, as we call it, is phenomenal. 100. Andrew, you require 122. Now, the 1 2 2 for Gilding. Should get a dart at the bullseye at least. Oh, he misses the big number. 72. John, you require now, will Henderson give himself a dart? Treble 17 he wants. He has given himself a dart at the ball. Get and he gets it! Third leg. John Henderson. Full flick, John well, is that the thing first. that's going to get Game on. John Henderson on a run? And then missing that big number. It could have been Andrew Gildin that hit the bullseye. And walking away 3-0. And he's got the break of throw back as Hendo.
22. Look at this, Andrew Gildin. That familiar plod to the ball to retrieve his darts. Coming up, we've got Devin Peterson against Nathan Aspinall. Stephen Bunting, the bullet, against Jihan Artur, the top German player in action this weekend. AC3. Dirk van Dijvenbode against Leo Hendricks is an all-Dutch affair, and then Jamie Lewis against Michael Rose now. Round things off in the evening session. That one's for the right to take on Michael van Gogh in the world number one. Yes, I had a good little chat with Stephen Bunting earlier on. He didn't hear a word I said because he had his ear earplugs in. Yes. It was me yapping away to him and I didn't even realise, so uh, old age coming on there. I asked him about jet lag, he said, what jet lag? I said, I just fell asleep all the way. <laughs> well, That's a better visit to... from Big John. Gilding has effectively stolen the darts in this one as he looks to get that break of throw back and he's going to put himself in a decent position it appears a very decent position don't want to go for another one of those 137 that will do for Andrew Gilding he'll get two darts at tops when he returns Sixty. and that's not and really pressured the shot at all so Gilding to get that leg back and to go two legs clear again. Eighteen. Hendo's not quite Jordan close enough. He needed the trouble with the previous visit. Ninety-seven. Andrew, you require Fulton. Well, oh, Gilding, three clear darts at tops for a 3-1 lead. And to get that break back. Doing his best to block our camera angle there. Down for double ten. 30. Well, well, well. Trying to require faulty. Well, John, <clears throat> don't look a gift horse in the mouth, I think is the old saying. That's a pretty good guide for John. I like Gilding as... Pulled it low, 20. and you won't get better chances than that. Both players very scrappy on the doubles. Double two. Six goals. Wow. Join 21 darts each, and still no winner. And it, it goes on. It could be one of those legs. 15. Andrew, you require four. Double two then for Gildin. Game to put this leg to play. bed. And well, it's an ugly one, Fifth but it's worth Andrew exactly the, the same as a nine darter. Game on. Winning ugly, we call it. It's exactly the same. Was winning brilliantly, I'm afraid. They all count, as you said. And it's the guys that can win ugly that win more tournaments, I'm afraid, because not everybody is going to batter people. 23. Better to win with an 80 average than to lose with a 100. There are players I've heard that would contradict that, <clears throat> which is the biggest load of rubbish I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that makes me laugh is when you, you beat someone, they, they apologise for not playing well enough. <laughs> that is the one that always made me laugh. Thank you very much. 99. Oh, John Henderson needs to step it up. Eighty-five. Yeah, it's not quite. I mean, for obvious reason, the more moving parts you've got, 
the more chance you've got of going wrong. And John just hasn't got that rocking motion in sync. And being right-handed, you know, the wasted darts normally will go into the five. Andrew Gilding, despite making a couple of finals on the PDC Tour last year and four semi-finals this year, including that UK Open one. Yet to do it on the European Tour, maybe. This could be his weekend. He's not made it past the last 16 before now. Terry Jenkins awaits if he can get through this one, but Big Hendo has fired in. A slightly better leg, he's down to a potential two dart finish on the gilding throw. Well, he's gonna have to come down for those 90. Well, no, he's staying there. Wow. Well, that's understandable because it was so inviting for another treble, which he needed. Took a gamble, didn't pay off, but it was a, an educated risk. 36. Andrew, 19, a bit trickier than the 120 he would have left if he'd hit a single 19. Well, there's the nine. Now then. This would hurt. 89. He'd want the bullseye. Trying to require Fox. Missed it by a little way in the end. Game shown the but Hendo man. made no mistake with Jimmy that one. 3 2. And Six a topsy turvy old first. game we've got here. Game on. All of a sudden. Hendo is throwing to level the match. Gilding does have the advantage of having thrown first, though. 46. But you get the feeling, whoever can just raise their game by a notch or two, it's, it's there for the taking. Neither of these guys playing anywhere near their, their you know, best standard. No, if, if someone can put a good couple of legs in, a couple of level 13, level 14, wow. you know, you feel they're going to run away with it. But at the moment... Near the player, and we have to say, well, you've said it, Dan, they're not playing nowhere near the standard that we know they can play. 85. Andrew Gilding settles into his little niche at the left hand side of. The hockey. I mean, he is one of the few players being right-handed that stands right over on the left-hand side. Yeah, it does it give our cameramen problems at it times? It does, yes. We have, they did introduce the wow. Gilding cam at the last European Tour event, which got a shot from above, just in case Gilding was blocking the way. We don't have that luxury here. And you see... 215s, 216s, that's pretty good. That real scrappy <laughs> leg, but this is better. There's the thumb. There's the thumb, Rod. I knew we'd get it in the end. I have to say, I can't remember, a bit slow there because they nearly missed it. Wow. Well, We're going to have to sharpen up a bit. 60. Andrew, you look at that. Serene. Like a giant spherical swan. Gives it the 180, gives it the thumb. Just go and pour myself a little drink. Then I'll have a plod over to the hockey. Not rushing for anyone. Well, that'll do. Oh, oh that, that won't. won't. <laughs> well, we've seen I mean, this time he's, he's not going to be punished, but that's twice that he's missed big numbers and not had a dart and a double. And he did it before. When he missed the 18, John took out the 1 2 1. Well, he's not punished Andrew there by Henderson, so Gilding is looking at double top here. He has not exactly been deadly on this so far. That's a little way off. There's a look of consternation on Andrew Game Gilding's face, but the double ten man. comes to his rescue. 4-2 Gilding. Well, I'm running 
Fouls. Well, I think the crowd are starting to sing Dave Chisnell, is it? Is it Dave Chisnell? It could be. I, I, the thing is with the German crowd, they're a bit like the Japanese ones in that they'll just they'll think of a player and then wow. suddenly burst Fouls. into song. Just the 81. Opens the door if Henderson can put in a big one here. And he might do. And he is doing. And he has done. So it's the start of a fight back from the Highlander. We're going to make it through to the next round where a Terry Jenkins awaits. 40. Well, he's got a chance to get the throw back. Shouldn't let it up from here. Will he go 25 or stay there? No, he stayed there. He's going to give himself two darts and his exceptional leg. We, you know, we kept saying that you know, if someone could just put a real good, quick, far couple of legs together. And if John Henderson could do that now, then he's going to be on the run. And Andrew Gilden on the back foot. A bit scrappy, Gilden. And, and so just an odd dart every visit. He is, it? yeah, and he's missing big numbers going for checkouts, which has not really been like Andrew for a, a while. Oh, that's a perfect dart. This has got going. 21. Hmm, surprising that it Andrew didn't, but Gilding is unlikely to make him pay. Back on 5-5, on five, five. we shall see. Well, he could do. Yeah, again, not really threatening that treble 19. 87. So, big hand up. Jordan required 20. That's double 10. Right on the wire again. Does Can not miss with his last dart in hand. Play. It's a 15 dart. Eighth leg, John to throw first. Game on. Well, he scored very well, did Hendo there. Now he's got to follow it up. He's got to get this leg back. He's got to start taking the game to Andrew Gilden. And, uh, you know, he had a great last leg scoring wise and then goes off with that, which it just opens the door for Gilden to come in with a 140 and all of a sudden nick the throw. Or even a 180. There you see, 97 plays 94 in the first nine averages. We both know these guys can produce better than that. The overall average is certainly a long way off what they'd expect of themselves. But it does underline the point, if somebody can just raise their game a little bit in these dying stages, it is right there for the taking. Is it going to be gilded? It could be. It could be. Well, Hendo cannot afford a visit without a treble. So it will be Gilding that gets the throw back again. Well, he's nicked the treble with the last dart. So, Hendo should get six darts from 185. It's only a 140 or a 180 that's really going to punish him. It's not overly hurt. But now Gilding, sorry, Henderson needs to find a treble. If he hits that treble, might go 25. Might no stay. He'll stay there for that. Oh, yeah, that's because why. that was, is so inviting. Andrew, you require 121. Well, a one-two-one. It could be a game changer. It could happen. Oh, he's missed a big number again. How many times has he done three that? Three times. 81. Yes, three times at crucial times as well, Dan. But he's missed the big number and failed to have a dart at a double. And and Hendo does it. John Henderson. Well, John Henderson, for the first time in the match, wins two consecutive legs. And, and Gildin's one of those players that you don't expect to miss big numbers. 
you know, he's, he's very methodical in his throw. He isn't a, a real fast thrower. He makes sure that the dart's in the right grip in his hand. He so, doesn't speed up or slow down no. or anything. It's very, very sort of rhythmical. And you can see the game has those winning legs are actually decent. Wow. It's just that a lot of the time the opponent's not really applying a great deal of pressure. That We've had that nightmare leg in the fourth where they were both struggling to hit anything. And that's why the overall averages are down. And also, you know, like the last two legs, well, the last three legs, four. you probably find the, the opponents, who's, the players lost the leg, is wanting too much. Yeah. They're just not doing it together consistently. And a strange old game we've got here, but the upshot is that it's four apiece. Gilding, he has got his nose in front. He does have to throw in two of the three remaining legs, including this one, of course. Check out percentages. I mean, they're hitting one in four. Their darts at double. It's going to give your opponent opportunities. Sixty-eight. Scruffy. Yes, he had two great legs. Did Big John, and, and now he's just kind of made it very easy for Gildin to go one leg away from a second round match and he's just picking off the odd treble with a visit 97 well, Hendo is renowned for hitting a lot of 140s needs to find one of those right now 41 Andrew you yeah not happy with himself the world number 37 No, 25 ball. Wasn't to be. Doesn't need to go that route with Hendo on 209. Well, that is the fourth time he's done that, Dan. Like I said, that's very unlike Andrew Gilding. A bit of a nervy game from both players. 95. Andrew, you require 40. Well, he's got three clear darts to go within one leg of the next round. Get and Goldfinger does not there. miss with that one. And it's another leg that's done in 15, 16 darts. From first game on. Make or break for the big Scotsman, John Henderson. One. Surely he's going to switch. Yeah, and a very good switch as well. And the way them darts were lying, if it had followed that up, it would have deflected it into the ones. 57. Advantage, Gildin. And he would love to end this right now. He doesn't want to go to a deciding leg. The way this game has gone, I mean, it would be anybody's. 46. Missed opportunity again for Andrew Gilding. 60. Well, what promised to be one of the highlights of the first round in terms of quality hasn't lived up to, you know, perhaps some of the more unlikely games that we've seen today. I mean, the brilliant performances we've seen from the likes of Roby John Rodriguez and Dimitri Vandenberg. Wow, so far today, these two played nowhere near the capabilities. We could have a very dramatic conclusion to this one. 14. Gets him to a finish. Well, we see Joey Cullen take the 1 4 4 out of the previous match. And killed him. Could really put some pressure on, and he's going to. Comes down for the 17s. Oh, oh perfect setup for Andrew Gildin. This is make or break John for John Henderson. Needs to find a couple of treble 20s, and he's not going to do it. So Gildin comes back. What must be about the seventh break of throw on the trot, I think. It's, uh, we had a couple of holds, but one, two, three, four, five. Yes, it, it has been a ridiculous game, and it would be a similar ending if Andrew Gilding 
with an L double six. Twelve score. Three match dots. George and Rick all of a sudden, Paul John Tim Henderson Paul. has the chance to take us to a decider. Topsy wants. And it's Topsy so gets. We're going all the way. Andrew Gilding now. Gilding the question is, can he pick himself up from first. that? Game dust on. himself off and make advantage of throwing first in this deciding leg. He has missed three match darts. The setup shot was absolutely incredible. Left him double 12, but he couldn't kill it off. But look at the way he started this. Well, we said there's going to be plenty of legs in this match, so if you've backed over on legs, you are sitting there laughing. Eighty-two. Just the 82 from Henderson. Gilding. He gave himself the opportunity in the last leg. He couldn't get the job done. Forty-four. A well, chance here for Henderson to get back in the match and perhaps steal a bit of the throw. I think that said it all from Andrew wow, the way he chucked his towel down on the table. Oh, mate, no mistake, nobody's chucking in the towel just yet. Both of these guys have every chance of closing out the victory. One of them's going to do it. 60. One of them has to. Well, it's in John Henderson's hands now. Another one of those 140s would do him very nicely. 99. A ton is good. A ton 40 would be very, very good. That's a decent, decent miss. 100. Just. Oh, another one of those would be very nice for Big John. Oh, what a time for him to find another one of those 140s. And now it's make or break for Andrew Gilding. Stand and deliver, Andrew Gilding. 157. It might have had to go. He survived. Three match darts, John Henderson. Now he's got three of his own in the deciding leg. Gilding sat on double 10 for the match. Is he going to get a go at it? I thought he was going to cross himself I, I there, John Henderson. <laughs> yes, I thought he was give it, going to give it that. Uh, you're up there on your own, John. No one can help you. No divine power is coming to your aid, Hendo. This is all on you, big man. Double top. Three darts at it for 6-5. Nowhere near. No score. Unbelievable. Now it's Henderson that has passed up three clear darts to win the match. Gildin had three in the previous leg. Now he's going to get three at double ten to finally wrap this match up. How many more chances are these guys going to need? Ten score. Three match darts in the Jeremy tenth leg for Andrew Gilding. Three missed in this leg. Hendo's missed three on his own. He's coming back at double top. It is his favourite. Well, he did the right thing. If you're going to miss, you miss above. And then go and hit it second dart after that guy. Oh. Double ten. Oh, stuck it in the corner. Hendo looks to the sky. John Henderson has somehow come through that. Six match dart missed by Andrew Dill. Round to face Peter Wright, the defending champion here at the European Darts Open. And I'm not sure I can take any more drama after that Gilding Hendo game. Well, I was just going to say, I think it's fair to say the crowd have just about got their breath back after that, shall we say, arduous war of attrition that went the distance and then some. Henderson just about getting over the line first ahead of Andrew Gilding. 6 5. The Highlander is through to round two and who knows could emulate his exploits in Munich where he reached the final over the Easter weekend in April tall order for him though but uh, these two men on the stage certainly will be hoping to play a part this weekend as well especially 
the man who's just been throwing the darts there, Nathan Aspinall. We talk about players on an upward curve, he is certainly one of them. Yes, certainly is. Young lad from Stockport, kind of come out of nowhere. Had a little run at the UK Open. Had a little run in Venray. Yeah, he did. He beat uh, Vincent gentlemen. van der Voort in First front of the Dutchman's home first. crowd in the second Game round. On. And then lost to the eventual finalist, Justin Pipe, in the last 16. Didn't have too much trouble qualifying as well. Beat Mickey Mansell and Steve West to get here to Dusseldorf. 100. And he's playing in only his second European Tour event. Not quite sure. 100. Who will be the favourites in the eyes of both punters and bookies like it? I think it will be a split decision. Both have their credentials. I think you'd probably have to make Peterson the favourite, but it wouldn't be by a great deal. Certainly. Aspinall 140. has picked up a few scalps since winning his tour card at Q School on points. That last 32 run at the UK Open. 60. Surpassed by Devon Peterson, who made it, of course, to the quarterfinals. Losing to Michael Van Gerwen. Stuck with him in the early stages. 91. But nobody was beating MVG that weekend in Minehead. I've got to say, it seems like ages since I was sat in that chair, or this chair, I should say, for the... Uh... It was a while, that last time. It seems like a, a lifetime ago. Imagine what it feels like for John Henderson. He'd survive six match at arms. The 170 is not going from Nathan Aspinall, but he's going to put a dent in it. 77. Perhaps not Devin big Yuriwa, enough dent, it remains to be seen. Oh, now then. Wow, well, I think the lie with that treble 20 mm. perhaps lent itself to trying to stick another in there and go for the double 13. It's not only his favourite double, but perhaps had a better chance of hitting the treble. Mm. Let's hit the five. Slightly is 88. So, Peterson 45. will return. Devin Yeruguay, 48. To hold his throat. Double 16 for a 1 0 lead. One more dart to go at it. 32. Chance here for Aspinall. Nathan Uruguay, 48. Kirkulator back on duty. Game shot in the first And leg. Aspinall Nathan is Aspinall. back in business. He leads 1-0. Second leg is Nathan to throw first. Game on. And an early break of throw in this one. Devin Peterson looking to join his good mate Joe Cullen in the second round. He does stay with Joe a lot when he comes over. He's flying back and forth. I believe he's still flying back and forth between the UK and South Africa. Big commitment. He's got no time zones to worry about, to speak of, but no. it's still a, a long old journey. 140. And uh, it's not free flying from South Africa, I believe, as well, so he has to make it worth his while. I'm sure he's picking up a few air miles. I'm sure he is. 140. Must have a loyalty card, at least. 100. Asking Rod Harrington nicely, or perhaps just give him a few free trips on his private jet. 100. Just the ton. But he does have 121 point lead in this leg, Nathan Aspinall. You may notice in the crowd there are just one or two, I'll say one or two, maybe like 50 to 60 empty seats that. Uh, have been vacated momentarily after that uh, duel. 92. There we go. People seeking refreshments and a bit of respite. It is hot. Very warm out there. It's marginally cool around outside though. Anybody thinking of getting fresh air? 48. May well have to uh, look elsewhere. Oh, another Mouse one of those there. Well, double eight, double eight was the route, but uh, it wasn't to be for Aspinall. May well come back for double four to hold his throat. Peterson with an outside chance here. I say outside chance, it's a good chance. Tops required. Ooh, Game nicely done. The leg, Devin and there's the break back for Devon Peterson. Third leg is Devon to throw first. Game on. Nice little 15 data. Both of these guys coming through qualifying. The Asp. Aspinall seeing off Mickey Mansell. And then Steve West. It was the second time he beat Steve West in that evening. 
Beat him in the qualifiers for Reese. For Reese, uh, yes, although he well. did, didn't make it through. Ended up losing to Colin Lloyd in the next round. As for Devon, 100. He saw off Curtis Hammond, Andy Jenkins, and Ronnie Baxter. Beat Ronnie Baxter 6 1. Mm, former major finalist, Ronnie Baxter, who has really Four struggled to establish himself on this, or establish himself in any of this uh, European tour season. Failing to qualify for any of them. 100. Good to see Peterson back, though. He played in the first two European Tour events of 2015, but none since his second round defeat by Gary Anderson in Gibraltar. Six. Lost 6 2 that day. He was uh, beaten 6 2 by Jeffrey de Zwan in the first round in Hildesheim as well. 96. He and does have the uh, comfort of being the only Spartan in the field this week. He'll be relieved about that. He's, yeah. he's glad that Reyes isn't here. Yeah, Christo Reyes losing in the European 100. qualifiers last night. The other man who has the moniker, the Spartan. Now then. 135. Yeah, came down for the treble 15. 165 would have left tops. Oh, needs a treble. Safety. Doesn't get it, so it could be a third breaker 70. throw here. Odds on that we're going to see a third breaker throw. Lovely first start. Brilliant. 54. He's Wild probably going to be back, young Nathan Aspinall. Could well be. Peterson, though, may not give him the opportunity. Excellent first start, excellent second start. Double 10 for a 2 1 lead. 120. A millimetre away, Make just below the wire. 16. Massive let off for Aspinall. That that would have been spectacular from Aspinall, uh, from Peterson. Sorry, Aspinall's not enjoying this double eight. Game shot. Uh, the eventually third leg. gets there, Nathan Aspinall. and it is the third successive well, break of throw, throw in this first round match. Game on. And it's two one to Aspinall. Aspinall comes into this having won his 60. first title on the development tour that was last month he beat Benito van der Pass 4-2 in the final of that Benito was on absolute fire that weekend out of the four events as Aspinall oh, fills it up for a maximum yeah he's on fire as well 40th 180 of the tournament already terrific tally that yeah, we have had some 60. pretty good stuff on the opening day. There have been some couple of ton plus averages, a couple pushing towards near the ton, including Joe Cullen, Devon's mate. Yeah, and some big checkouts as well. Yeah, 74. some really, really good finishing today. 148, a 142. That 146. Yeah. 140. Uh, from Nathan Uruguay, 150. Mike Dedeca. Yeah. Mike Dedeca in the absolute battle with Mensor Sulevich. Best match of the day, that. We're going to have a 150 here as well. Why not? <laughs> Why leg. not indeed? Oh, not bad, Nathan Aspinall. 3 1 to the good. 43. Holds his throw. First time we've had the uh, holder throw this uh, match. What a way to do it. Killer blow. Follows up with a one trouble 19. Great recovery from Aspinall. Lots to like about him. Promising young player. 97. All right, look at the way he throws. I mean, he has this sort of weird hop when he throws the dart. Now, I, I wouldn't have thought that that 100. lends itself to being able to consistently find your target, but he's a man who's making progress. 60. As we say, saw off Benito van der Pass on a weekend when he was he was just storming his way through to finals that weekend on the development tour. So that's mm. his first development tour title. He's already taken a few scouts on the main 100. tour. He's obviously here this weekend, a very strong position right now against Devin Peterson. 140. Good response from Peterson. That does get him down to a finish, but Aspinall probably favoured for this leg, and it on the Peterson throw as well. Needs to find a treble. 100. Does do so. Yeah, he's in a good position now. Effectively, 
barring something special here, six starts at 86, and he will be back. Well, 99. He should certainly get a dart the bullseye 86. at least. Uh -huh. Well, he went for the treble and he got it. Yeah, he's just double checking. Double seven is what he wants. I meant three darts at 86, by the way. <laughs> 79. Well, well, well. Devin Uruguay, 62. Devin Peterson, 62 left. He's only going to get one dart, and it's a double 16. Getting Needed it, got there. it, 3-2. Sick is Nathan to throw first. Game on. Missed opportunity for Aspinall there. Double seven, it's a bit of a tricky one. I'm kind of feeling he might have been knocked out of his rhythm 59. by just double checking with Kurt Bevans what mm. he did want. Well, whoever wins this will have over 24 82. hours to recover because they'll be involved in the last match of the evening session tomorrow against the defending champion Peter Wright, number three seed this time around. Wright awaiting the winner 85. of this one tomorrow. Mm, look at those averages. 96 overall for Nathan Aspinall. Pretty handy. 81. And importantly, he's a break up. See, it could be 4 1 were it not for that one missed dart at double seven. 140. That one just lands a little bit high, otherwise, it would have been another maximum, his second of the match. 140. Is this Peterson getting into a rhythm? Sixty-six. Important last dart gets him down to a finish, albeit a big one. That's a lovely looking first dart. Oh yes, mm. Devin Peterson. Seventy-eight left. Should be the eighteens. One hundred and thirty-eight. And that'll mean he gets two darts, a double top. If he returns, he's taken out a hundred and fifty, not hundred and fifty-one. Really? No. Well, no. 119. Great set setup. Nicely, though, yeah. yeah indeed. 60. But Peterson should finish this off if he wants to have any hope of getting involved Games here. And the Julie does. Right in the post, is stamp that one. Seven Three like apiece. On we go. Burst. Strong leg of darts that from Devin Peterson. Gets the break back. Game on. And all of a sudden, he's throwing to take the lead for the first time in the match. Big, big glugs of water for both players there at the halfway stage of this one. 59. One hundred and thirty-four. Well, that's a good start for Aspinall if he wants to uh, break back here. One hundred. One hundred. Sixty. Three well-thrown darts there for 60 points. That's perfect, though. Oh, yes. 100 Yes, Nathan oh, it's it's well. Very good. Very, very good. Just crept in, didn't it? Oh. Now then, what a response from Peterson. 140 keeps himself in such just about. But Aspinall with a great chance to break here. 17 leaves 78. Oh, he's fluffed his lines there. Well, he may be back. 33. Devin Uruguay, 142. Oh, that's a good first dart. Just above the wire. 95. Nathan Uruguay, 54. Well, he's missed a big number, but it's not the end of the world, dear. He will get two darts at a double if he returns. He's hoping Nathan Aspinall misses two darts at tops here. But he doesn't. But he doesn't. And it's another break and throw, breaking straight back. Fourth of the match, fourth break. Three by Aspinall as well. well he did the hard work, Devin Peterson, in levelling up the match, but surrenders the initiative almost immediately. Oh, 
And you see nothing going longer than 60. six visits to the board. Decent standard, this. Particularly from Aspinall, it has to be said. His average is in the high 90s. 83. Just the 83, but... And there you see, 98 average, 110 for the first nine darts, but Peterson fires in a ton 40. And you see where the difference is, it's just the uh, consistency on hitting one treble per visit that has helped 40. boost Nathan Aspinall's overall average. Something he hasn't done there. Buying himself more opportunities at doubles 60. is Nathan Aspinall. Again. Just a 60 from Devon Peterson. Yeah, that was a chance there with Aspinall having missed the trebles last time for Peterson to kick on, but he's not really taken advantage. 100. Mm, and this leg is very much up for grabs here for either player. Grimace from Peterson. 60. Trying to just G himself up, give himself some encouragement. It's not happening for him at the moment. 100. So Aspinall down to a finish first on his throw as you'd expect. 140. More like it from Nathan Peterson. Edouard, 78. Might be too little too late in this leg though. Nathan Aspinall should get a dart. A double top needs to stay straight, does so. Now he's not moving. Because he just wanted to Devin find Edouard, the bed to the right hand 51. side. I think that might have caught the flight. Just got in the way. Maybe he would have done well just to take a step across the hockey. As it is, Devin Peterson to break again in this match. Double 16, last dart in hand. Oh, he's got next door. Seven. Nathan, you're quite 20. Well, well, well. This for a 5 3 lead. Two darts in hand Danger at double 10, end, only Nathan needs one of them. My leg is Devin to throw first. Game on. Well, that's the first leg in this match to go longer than six visits to the board. But it could well prove to be a crucial one. Devin Peterson now needs to win the last three. He does have to throw in two of them. But Nathan Aspinall, averaging in the mid-90s. 41. That's twice you've mentioned averages and bang on cue, he's Failed to hit a trouble. He's not going to mention it anymore. <laughs> Bit of a flyer, that one. Great adjustment. Very, very good. Got talent, this lad. Certainly has. That was evidence in Venright. 100. Evidence elsewhere as well. Evidence in qualifying, too. And evidence on the development tour as well. As a youngster. Coming all to fruition 55. now. Yeah, we beat Andy Jenkins and Ronnie Baxter in qualifying this for De uh, Devin Peterson. The Asp. And Steve West and Mickey Mansell. I mean, they probably got socks older than Nathan Aspen. Yeah, he's seen them off. And he could be about to take the scalp of Devin Peterson here, but... Peterson is favourite for this leg, and that would make it 5-4. 95. 95 gets Aspinall down 100. to the big one, 170. Ooh. 53. Nathan Uruguay, not really enough. Not out of the question. Still not out of the question. 98. Devin Uruguay, 88. Well... Peterson with work to do here. Bull for a 4-5. Oh, it's beautifully taken. That's brilliant. Look what it means to him as well. That could give him a huge amount of encouragement. Heading into either the penultimate leg of the match or the final leg of the match. We'll find out soon enough. Now then, Devon, just when you needed it, is this when you find your best? 140. Oh, not far off a maximum. Maybe that ball finish just sparks him into life. A couple of 12 or 13 darters. Probably 100. win the game for 
Devin Peterson here. He does have to throw in the final leg if it goes that far. And look at this. 100. Look at this from Devin Peterson. Well, he's in the groove at just the right time, exactly when he needed it most. 60. A 140 and a 180. And he's in a great position here to break and force a deciding leg. Another 6-5. I think 60. we could well be on course for it. Well, Nathan Aspinall's got a chance here, but he needs, needs two trebles at least. That makes it hard. 57. And no trebles at all means that Devin Peterson has got all the time in the world for this 1-2-1. One, one. Now, 15s, will it be? He's gone for the ball now. Double 18. 85. Well, he knows he could have been uh, much, much closer than that, but uh, plenty of room for manoeuvre here for Peterson. But if Aspinall can just keep chipping away here... 100. Devin Uruguay, 36. So, to take us to a deciding leg, Devin Peterson wants double 18. That is nowhere near. That one's not much closer. Game and that one finds its mark. And a roar from Peterson. We are going all the uh, way here. Six Stand breaks of throw first. in this match, three Game apiece, on. five legs all. Peterson throwing first. He trailed 3 1 and 5 3, and yet he could still go through to the second round to face the defending champion Peter Wright, especially with a kickoff like that. 140 on the board. Well, Nathan Aspinall, for the first time in the match, well, second time in the match, sorry, he's lost two consecutive legs needs to pick himself up and 60. hit back and just 60 isn't enough Devin Peterson now becomes heavy favorite for this one he has trailed from the first leg 45 that's to restore parity at three all and Aspinall pulled away again it was five three up is he gonna fall at the 100. final hurdle Well, it would be cruel of Aspinall, but to some extent, he'd only have himself to blame. 60. Peterson coming up with the goods at exactly the right time. And 58. once again, Aspinall fails to find the treble bed of any significance there. Well, John Henderson had to survive six match darts from Andrew Gilding to make it through to the second round earlier this evening. Nathan Aspinall may have to survive match darts himself if he is going to continue with his campaign here at the European Darts Open. Needs another one of those. And he gets one. He's down to a finish. But Peterson only needs one treble for a shot at a double. Oh, that's not the treble he wanted. No, so it leaves 95. 60. Okay, well. Nathan Uruguay, 143. This would be huge. He took out the 150 in the fourth leg of the match. He's not going to take out the 143, but he is going to apply some pressure. And Devin Peterson should get two match darts. Devin Uruguay, 56. What have you got, Devin? 56 for the match and 6 5. Two darts, a double top. And he sends Aspinall out. He trailed pretty much all the way through this one, but the Spartan lives up to his name. Gives a roar to the crowd there on their feet. It's another 6-5 at the European Darts Open. And Devin Peterson, by the skin of his teeth, is through to face the defending champion, Peter Wright. Nathan Aspinall looks in control at times here. Not to be for the young man. We'll see plenty more of him, though. I guarantee that. Coming up now. Here in Dusseldorf, we have got one of the biggest names in the opening round action today. Stephen Bunting, the bullet, taking on Germany's top player in the tournament, Jihan Artut. But here's your winner, Devin Peterson, who has battled through to round two here in Dusseldorf. So here we go, one of the big names in action here in Dusseldorf on day one. Stephen Bunting, a Premier League player up against arguably the best German player in the draw. Only one of two Germans left involved here in Dusseldorf, Jihan Artut. Perhaps overdue a win in Europe this year, having gone close in previous events on the European calendar. But up against it, against a man who on his day can be a class act.
by the same token, Bunting has been guilty of blowing hot and cold on occasions, especially in Europe as well. Rod Harrington back with me. Uh, Rod, it's hotting up, hotting up out there, isn't it, in more ways than one? It certainly is. Uh, good crowd in here this evening in Dusseldorf, and uh, there should be plenty of noise for Artur here against Stephen Bunting. And you're kind of right, Rob, what you said, that especially in the European events, Steve's not been consistent. No. Um, and that he needs to put right. Um, but on the same token, Artur, I mean, sometimes he can be pretty poor, but then all of a sudden he turns up, and you've got to look out. Well, he's a player who really shot to prominence when he qualified for the 2012 PDC World Championship through the European Order of Merit. He was drawn to play Gary Anderson in round one. It turned out to be one of the most exciting first round matches ever seen as Ali Pali. He won the opening two sets, got pulled back fairly quickly, but then missed four darts to win the match in the 10th leg of the deciding set. And Anderson eventually got over the line, winning with a sudden death leg as well. So that was when really oh, Jihan Artuk came to the attention of fans in the UK in particular. But he's been a very, very popular player here in Germany for some time now. 140. And he is arguably Germany's best hope here now, especially with uh, three of their own having been knocked out already. We've got uh, one more German involved 58. later, Michael Rosenauer. On stage later, but uh, Arsut's perhaps given the or one of the toughest draws he could have imagined at this stage. But well, he, hasn't there you kicked, go. he hasn't kicked off bad. And Stephen yet to hit a throw, throwing them very quick and oh, I don't know how to explain that, but as if he didn't care that last one. And Arsut's in there again. Ooh, that's unlucky. Yeah, it pinged off the uh, centre of the board. I think it was uh, destined for a 25, but uh, anyway, might not matter too much because he has a 260-point cushion at the moment, 60. and Bunting's only Genuine shipped away wow, 60 there. Wow, well, double 16. 69. Obviously, well, we Langendorf go that way yeah. earlier on. It's the European way, perhaps. He's had a dart and a double, so it suggests that it worked for 57. him. 57. January 1, 32. 10 times it wouldn't. But this will be a nice little tidy leg against the throw. Game's yeah, it was very important he finished that off. He did really, really well to put himself in that position in the first place. Didn't want to be messing about with the doubles for too long. And eventually gets the double eight and has the early break. What a start for the German. What a start for the crowd here. Sensing a, an opportunity, perhaps a, an upset on the cards, nice maybe. Well, Steve didn't, I don't think he hit a treadle in that, that leg at all. Well, he's put that right now. 140. And he's got two there, so Bunting showing signs of life at long last. 140. Yeah, but has followed in. Well, Stephen Bunton's got to stay focused here. You don't want to let a German in front of his own crowd. 140. You know, get a couple of legs up because yeah. then the noise will really start to, yeah. to pound on you. Yeah, it went a bit quiet in that last match. I think people nipped off to uh, get refreshment, 60. shall we say, after that lengthy match between Henderson and Andrew Gilding. So there was a bit of a lull before this arrival of Artur on stage. 51. And the noise has just cranked up a gear here. And it will get louder and louder if Artur can keep himself in a good position. Has the early break, 60. he's lost a flight, but he gets the Stephen point. Mile, 170. Well, Stephen can't afford to have a visit without a treble here. Not big, that sort. Yes, yeah, a big treble. I mean, even a big treble's not going to give you. 43. Him, yes, I mean, January and those darts are a long way off. It's very inconsistent. And I took now another one of those. Oh. That's 80, a shame. 20. I like the 25 here. And he's gone 78. For the, you know, again, Rob, Wild, you know, if he'd have gone 25, gives him two darts guaranteed at a double. May not even get back to the board, though. 
Double eight. That's beautiful from Bunting. But he's some way off with that. Uh, Genuine 66. Attempt at double eight. Oh, he's hit the 25 there, 41 required. Will he go nine double 16? Oh, sorry. Yep. He will, and he does. Just for a moment there, I thought he was changing his mind, but he stuck to his guns. And it's a good hold from Jihan Artut. Well, Stephen Bunting has got to start getting serious. 59. Well, Artut has never been beyond the second round of a European Tour event. He uh, lost 6-5 to Mensor Sulovic in the first round in Munich. That was harsh as well, I remember that really well. As Bunting lands a really big blow there. He was also a first round in loser uh, in uh, Riza a few weeks ago, I should say. Lost to Johnny Clayton. 83. Bunting needs to get on the scoreboard here, and he's in a good position to do so after that maximum. Yeah, it's unfortunate to back it up as well. He looks to be in a very, very good position now to hold his throw here. 45. Steve Yerbois, 47. Just a reshuffle across the hockey, Game and it's to good effect as well. Well, that should help him out the first 12 dark Game leg. On. However, he's still got a break. GNR took. He's going to win this game. 100. He needs a 12 dart or a throw now. More of 180 to frighten the German. In fact, frighten him. He's going to. 140. Did Bunting seem to get much out of his visit to Japan? I know he lost to Van Gerwen in the 55. end, but was it a good experience for him, do you think? I think it was, a, it was a great experience for everybody. I mean, a few of them have been over there many, many years ago, but not to the extent that, that we did this tour. 140! It was uh, you know, Matt Porter and, and especially Matt Porter and our staff. I mean, the way they put it together was excellent. Yeah. 60. <laughs> You're not only dealing with a different culture of business, you're talking the time difference. So when you know, you're know you asleep, they're at work. So you've got all that to, to cope with. But they did a great job. Absolutely perfect, it was. You're a fan of sushi as well? Well, I actually ate a whole Senior meal with chocolate, um, which was a feat. Big achievement. I did help, my hands did help me out a few times, <laughs> I have to say. 81. So probably it was good for the others because I never ate as much as I normally do. <laughs> but uh, no, we had a couple of great meals. And, uh, I find the chopsticks slow you down 100. as well. It's quite good. It's Steve probably good for 40. you. Not you in particular, but you know, good for everyone. <laughs> anyway, back to the darts. Still 2 1 out at Leeds. Bunting, though. 35. January 86. Looking his lines there. Tops he needed to break back and he failed to do so. Double 16. And Arthur holds very nicely indeed. My word, he was let off the hook there though. Arthur was probably resigned to the fact that Bunting would level things up there. Three darts at double top and he failed to take it out. 100. Well, in the early part of the game, people like, you know, Bunting, the, the top 8, 12 players. They don't tend to panic for the first two or three legs. If it's not going for them, they kind of let themselves play into it. But like with that previous leg where he missed R2 the double and R2 nicks it and takes out a good shot. It'll only go on so long before all of a sudden the pressure will pile on, say, Stephen Bunting. Mm. So he's got to get it right very shortly. Otherwise, you know, as I said, the crowd will get a bit noisy. R2 in front of his German crowd, his own crowd will... Start to get very confident. Well, Bunting's averages, his first nine average isn't too bad. Uh, the overall average dips, of course, as you might expect, 59. but it's one from six on the checkouts that spin is undoing to some extent here as well, coupled with R2 being more effective and uh, more efficient on the checkout Whoa. percentages, taking his chances. Well, Steve can't afford a visit without a treble here. Should find a treble from that first start. 
137. Oh, that's a good visit, but R2 now. Two trebles for him would certainly put the pressure on. And that's a perfect dart. Look at the fin on the flight. Surely he's going to find another treble from there. I mean, he just had to. It was nice. absolutely perfect. And that's what I was talking about, putting the pressure on. Well, he's oozing confidence at the moment. Arthur, I'm sure deep down he's... 92. Jenny requires 61. Got a few butterflies in his tummy, but he looks comfortable out there. Not a bead of sweat on him, by the way, on what is a very, very warm night, both inside and outside the arena. Sixteen, he yeah. has indeed, so it's left 45, that leaves double 16 for a 4-1 lead. Oh. That's what I mean, I mean the double 18, Steve, was really low, a full dart. And R2 is not missing his doubles, he's had an 86, now a 61. And that double 16 has really given Stephen Bunton some problems. Mm. He Bunting. seems to be throwing, sorry Rob, he seems to be throwing very quick tonight, Steve. I mean, quicker than normal. Yeah. Well, this will uh, do him the world of good. You could get those through a polo, man. I mean, that's... You could, and the pace. That they were, all three of those darts were a lot slower. If you throw a little bit slower, you guarantee that you're picking the dart 60. in the same place all the time. You're setting the dart right. It's so easy to be more consistent. But when you... I know a lot of players speed up. You know, the Lewis's and the Van Gerwens, but at times, you know, when it, has, it isn't working for you've just got to stand back and recoup a little bit. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Well, well I think he should have had a maximum there. I'm, I'm pretty sure that came out of the treble 20, but that could make the world of difference here. Bunting still with work to do. 60. Yeah, and he's not found a treble there either, so... Maybe a chance here. Big score from Artut would make an impact. Could do with another one. 98. Yeah. Yes, he had to switch Steve to the 18 to make sure he left himself a check out. And again, a visit without a treble could be problems. Uh, he's not done that, so now the 51. And come back up to the top. 97. And, and again, Junior Rob, Wild, I know I keep saying it time and time again. When you're in a position here like Steve is, he needs to get an extra dart at a double. Now, admittedly, if he hits a treble 16 60. or a treble 8, he Steve will have to. But he may only get the one dart. And the way R2 is checking out, he's got to be careful. He's only going to get the one. Yeah, he is indeed. Double 16 to reduce the deficit to 4 2. And that was some way off as well. January 1, 104. Outside chance. Well, good chance here for R2. That leaves 84. Wow. Yeah, the first dart was so wild. Yeah. It was so far over pitched. He, um, he had no 56. range, no length. Stephen Uruguay, 16. It weren't the best of guides, so Stephen Bunting to kind of break a throw back. Crowd are playing their part here, as you can detect yeah, in the background, but Bunting, Bunting isn't knocked off his stride there. Seven it's now 4 2. Game on. That's one break back. Yes, he's got to fire in a couple of quick legs here. And I don't mean quick as in throwing too quick. I mean quick as in least darts. Carbon copy. Yeah. Help. Almost a carbon copy of his last 180. Cluster together. Quick momentum. Quick delivery. 96. Breeze through qualifying, by the way, Stephen Bunting. Played two matches in qualifying in Crawley, lost only one wow. leg against Wayne Jones. 6 1 the score, and Matt Edgar beaten 6 0. Got to the quarters in Reza, went down 6 5 wow. to Ian White in a match that could easily have gone either way. Bullet certainly had his chances in that one. Was one of the seeds in Ven Rai as well, 60. but went down to Josh Payne there. Talks about him blowing hot and cold in Europe, and he's doing it again tonight as well. Fifty-eight. Steve Newbar, yeah, well, 161. Flying them darts a good couple of inches high. He really has a problem getting down to the treble from there. He's probably best to switch to the 19s. 100. Mm. 
Yeah, and Artu may well be playing darts as well as with his hands 40, between the ears as well now because suddenly a, a 4 1 lead could become 4 3, and it's a very, very different game. Double 18, 4 4 3, and there it is. And boxing's in the room now. Yes, this is the leg that Artu has got to stay straight. No more than 15 darts. Make Bunting work. That's a great start. Yeah, that'll do. Because if R2 can win this, then the real pressure is on. Kim Hybrex awaits the winner of this one, by the way, tomorrow. 140. Hybrex seeded 13 for this event. Got the old Dutch affair 47. coming up. Dirk van Dijvenboder against Leo Hendricks. <laughs> and then uh, we have... The final match of the night, but not before another maximum from Stephen Bunting. And R2 is under all sorts of pressure now. Jamie Lewis 60. against Michael Rosenauer, the last match of the night. Another German in action. Fifty-nine. 180 backed up though by a 59, but still Bunting in a good, good position to break back again here. But look at this from R2. Mm, has to settle for the 140. Got Steve the crowd going though momentarily. That's important for R2. Needs to get the crowd back on side. That will help him. That will do him the world of good. Has that found the 54? Yes, it has. And ooh, he wasn't a million miles Jay away. Well, this could hurt Stephen Bunting if R2 takes this out. He's going to get a dart at the double. Games oh, on and he's hit it. That could spell some trouble for the ex world Don't champion. Take to throw first. Game on. Fifty-eight. Well, three legs left in this match. Well, now <laughs> that really has put the cat amongst the pigeons. And Stephen Bunting now has got to pull out all the stops. He's going to have to find some big scores if it's to stay in this 58. match. And you have to say that those first, well, especially the first two legs, he was very dull. Never hit really a treble. Well, four perfect darts for Jihan Artuk, but nevertheless, he's still in great shape here. It just seemed to be running away from him, didn't it? But then suddenly, he's just regained the initiative from somewhere. He's got it back on side again. He's got the crowd on side again as well. And he's got the possibility here of another break. He might want to finish it off at this time of asking. Well, he's done exactly what he needed to do. He's hit a, a, a big treble. He's going to now get six darts from 128 to knock Stephen Bunting out of this year's January 128. Off. Yeah, he's wow. done the right thing. He never had. He didn't need to go the bullseye route. Oh, and again, he finds the trouble with the last dart. He well, will come back for double 14. He will, and it certainly will be the biggest upset of day one if he can pull it off Stephen Bunting the Premier League player on the verge of defeat here double 14 he only needs one dart at it as well and Germany will have a representative in the second round of the European Darts Open this weekend a terrific performance by Jihan Artur their main hope of their five representatives brilliant stuff from him looks to be running away from him when Bunting fought back to 4-3, but Artux managed to resurrect the situation, managed to get himself back on side, back on track. The crowd got their tails up again, and they are now celebrating the fact that one of their own will be involved this weekend. Kim Ibrex lies in wait tomorrow. In the meantime, Jihan Artu can celebrate a very, very notable scalp. And for Stephen Bunting, his European Tour misery continues this season. Hasn't really hit the heights in Europe so far. And he's on his way home on the next plane as well. Artu goes through, we'll hear from him now with Elmer Polka. Just to remind you once again, up next we've got the old Dutch affair between Leo Hendricks and another qualifier from last night, Dirk van Dijvenbode. But here... Is the man behind the biggest shock of the weekend so far, Jihan Artur?
Ja, auf jeden Fall. Ich war ja ähm, nach dem 4-1 ziemlich weit vorne. Dann äh, fange ich wieder an zu schwächeln und das hat mich ganz schön genervt. Und ich habe äh, Steven auch vorhin gesagt, die Finishes, die ich gemacht habe, die Doppel-16 lief wie Sau heute. Und äh, das war mein äh, Glück und äh, ich bin froh, dass ich ihn nicht wieder ins Spiel kommen lassen habe. Und dafür musste ich auch diese blöden Finishes machen und da bin ich echt stolz drauf heute. Stimmung für den Freitagabend? Eine Eins. Ja, für den Freitagabend ist das hier der Oberhammer, Jungs. Ich danke euch vielmals. Gian, vielleicht eins noch. Hat es eben auch gesagt, als du hier auf die Bühne kamst. Bei, beim World Cup schon richtig gut gespielt, auch gegen Taylor ein gutes Match gemacht. Irgendwie geht es in den letzten Wochen und Monaten fast so wieder Fuß. Also vor dem World Cup äh, Riesa, das 6-1 gegen den Michael, äh, gegen den Griechen. Äh, das war noch ziemlich schlecht, was ich da gespielt habe, aber dann vor dem World Cup, ich habe viel trainiert, ich habe ihn Max getroffen. Äh, wir haben am Abend vorher, vor dem Donnerstag gegen das Spiel gegen Indien, haben wir, glaube ich, neun Spiele Best of äh, 11 gemacht und das hat geholfen, ohne Ende. Und ich war auch äh, im Practice-Bereich super drauf. Das habe ich ganz nicht auf die Bühne gekriegt, da, aber trotzdem war das richtig gut beim World Cup und das hat äh, mein Selbstbewusstsein hundertprozentig voll aufgebaut und in letzter Zeit spiele ich aber klasse Darts. Und jetzt auch diesen Sieg mitnehmen. Wir sehen dich morgen wieder. Wir freuen uns drauf. Ladies and Gentlemen, Gian Artus! Nickname now. Good nickname. Dan Dawson in the commentary box for this one. Rod Harrington alongside me. Never saw you do that on a walk on, Rod. I was just doing it with him. Right, okay. You we were going put through, your back we, out. We were going through it earlier on. He said, look, <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. I was puffing a little bit more than what he was. Uh, I'm going to back. Hendricks to win the first leg here. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little bit tired after that walk on. Yeah, there was some aggression in that, wasn't there? Oh, Dirk van Dijvenbo, that. He, uh, he doesn't mess around. He's, uh, he frightened the life out of Ross he, Bray. Uh, he did. I, I remember him doing similar in Gibraltar and the sheer look of terror on Russ Bray's face it was a sight to behold. And he's a big lad, well, oh, yeah. well over six foot. It's like getting a lap dance off a gorilla, that. <laughs> I assume. I don't know what places you have been to. <laughs> and we can't talk That's about them I'm on air. No longer allowed at London Zoo. <laughs> anyway, penultimate game of the first round, and it's an all Dutch affair. The final match of the evening will see Jamie Lewis take on Michael Rosen out. Already seen one German through to the next round. Jihan Artut. Stunning. Well. Stunning. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First leg yes, I have, to, have to say, first. I thought Steven took it a little bit too lightly in the first two or three legs. Um, took him too long to get going, and, and then when it gets towards you know, the business end of a game, you're always opening yourself up for what R2 did. And it was take out a few big shots out. You mean he took out 86, 61, 91. and the 114 was absolutely the killer blow. Well, one German through to the next round. Definitely going to get a Dutchman through from this one. Who's it going to be though? Hendricks or Van Dijven Bodak? Van Dijven Bodak, 23 years old, saw off Petrus Heinen and Titus Karnik in the qualifiers last night. As for Leo Hendricks, not to be confused with various other Hendricks that do the rounds in professional darts. Jerry and wow. Jimmy. Ronnie Hyvrex and Alexei Kadochnikov were his victims in qualifying. 100. And Dyvon Boda really does fling it at the board as well. Well, he, he doesn't take his time getting the dart out of the board either, does he? He's quite quick all over the place. 125. Oh, that will do very nicely for Van Dyvon Boda. Gets himself down to a finish, put a bit of pressure. And the Leo Hendricks throw in the opening leg of this one. Winner goes through to face the number two seed, James Wade, the multiple major champion. A man who won on the Pro Tour just a few days ago in Wigan. Oh, another one of those. Double top. What a shot this will be. He may come back to the board. Hendricks. Needs to find a treble eight or a treble 16. He hasn't found it, so he's only going to get one dart at the double. Double 16 it is. 
40. Don't you require 40. Now, now Van Dijvenbode for an early break. Oh. 33. Made it more difficult than Leo he needed to be. 24. Yes, he did all the hard work, giving himself a chance after 12 darts. Game shot the first and he's made leg. to pay as Hendricks Leo gets the Hendricks. first leg on the Second board. Leg, Dirk to throw first. One hundred. Got a little bit of a funny stutter when he brings the dart right in under his chin there. Wow, I mean, he's basically Fulton. bouncing it off his shoulder, the flight there. It's a curious action he's got. 100. I think he genuinely is actually touching his own collarbone pretty much with that dart. I think that one did. 26. The less said about that visit, the better, as Diamond Bowler looks to capitalise. 59. Doesn't really do so. Well, A great Fulton. visit from Hendricks. Let's really put the pressure on now. But that is a perfect dart. 100. Uh, from that first dart, should be fine. Another treble. What he's done, he's opened the door up for Hendricks now. And if he can find another one of those, which he has done, he'll come down for the treble 17 now. 137. Oh, Van Dijvenboda under pressure here in the second leg of the match. Well, you can't argue yeah, with how he's set it up, but Hendricks should get two darts. I think he was, is he querying the score? He's unaware of what he wanted, looked to be addressing somewhere other than the 18. Oh, and, and that might have played a part. <laughs> I think it possibly could have done. Mind you, if he hits this, it doesn't matter. 18. Not a million Don't miles away, but 16. Van Dijvenboda has got to hit this double eight. And a bit of a problem on the doubles early Eight on, scores. Van Dijve and Boda. We only require 40. Well, he missed darts in the first leg, he's missed darts in the second leg. And he's opening the door for Hendricks. Oh, that was a bit of a wild one. One dart left for a 2 0 lead, and 20. he's gone and missed as well. Don't you require eight? Game a bit more like it from Dirk van Dijven and Boda, uh, and he stares down that double four. Like he said something nasty about his mum. Or his dancing. I wouldn't say either. Well, right on, Fawlty. Seventy-seven. Ninety-one. Well, Dive and Boat up one of the many good young dart players that are coming out of Europe now. Ninety-three. The future looks pretty rosy for them. I mean, we've had a good mixture today. Yeah, we certainly have. Dimitri. Yeah, we've uh, seen some very impressive performances from some of the young lads. Dimitri, obviously, Roby John Rodriguez, the Austrian, Van der Boe, the Belgian, of course. Mike De Decker really did 41. put in a decent the performance against Petzl Sulevich, but he just couldn't get over the line against him. I'm just hoping that that having those three clear darts, double 14, to win the match is not going to hurt the young man. That's where 
the strength comes in. It's not in sometimes the strength of your throw, it's the strength of your mental approach after a loss like that. Great cover shot from Dan Van Dyven Boda there. Gets him down to a finish, but Hendricks is looking at 87 for a 2 1 lead. Looking at the 20s and misses a big number, and you can see what he thinks of that. 37. Now, the 156. Well, he missed the 160 in the very first leg. Oh, look at this, Dirk Van Dyvenboda! Just outside, and a oh, baleful glare at a double from Dirk Van Dyvenboda. Hendricks, two darts at double 16. Oh, again, he's nearer the neighbour. 18! Van Dyvenboda gets the opportunity. A break a throw and a 2-1 lead. Double nine. Game Gets it. Look at that. I mean, it's what I'm going to say. Double nine, switch. He's hit it first time, Rob. It's actually the third time today that the, they've hit the double nine, which is very unusual. So I won't go on about that this is the worst <laughs> switch. <laughs> but here wow. comes Dirk van Dijvenboda. I thought you was going to pull me up on that. Well, you know. The 180 has kind of taken all the emphasis away from the double <laughs> bring, nine. You now. bring it back anyway. Yeah. Now, Dirk Van Dijvenboda <laughs> hits first nine data earlier on this year. That was in April on the development tour. And he's had four perfect darts here. Now, make that five. Oh! oh. Just deflected it into the five, but he's not too worried about the nine dart. He's just worried about winning the leg. Again, we talked earlier on most of the day, and we do it most tournaments about not terribly easy draws, but easier than, than you could have. And you, you, wow, you know, Dirk's got to look frosty. at this and think, well, look, I've got to win games like this. It's an opportunity for him, isn't it? I mean, Leo Hendricks, I mean, he's been around for quite some time playing darts, but he had a break from it. He, he didn't play a great thing. He's tried tried and failed in Q school a couple of times. Played a couple of Euro tours before this, lost in round one, both of them. So, Van Dijvenboda would have looked at this and thought, look, this is about, about as good as it's going to get. Still got to go and win the game. Yeah, sometimes in the early part of the game, you can take it too easy, and then all of a sudden, perhaps a bit like Stephen Butler, I'm not saying he did take it too easy, but certainly the first two legs, he... No real pressure on that visit from Dirk Van Dijvenboda though, and he polishes it off for a 14 dart leg, and there's a bit of daylight between these two now. He has had some success, Dirk, on the Challenge Tour. He's made three finals in total. Yet to, yet to win one, but, but it's, a, it's a good, you know, the, the development tours we call it now, and then the challenge tour, they're very good tours to learn people how to win and, and also earn some money to help them mm. sponsor themselves. That's the main aim of the PDC to do this. I mean, we don't want people who are great players to also drift out because they, perhaps they can't afford to play the extra couple of tournaments. So. The money that we're putting into those tours wow. does help out. There's Diamond Bona. That's the 50th maximum of the day. He's had a couple of quarterfinals on the main tour as well. The one recently in Wigan. So, look, he is making progress, is Dirt. You know, the rate of progress of different players will vary. Nine but as long as you see continual improvement, then there's, there's hope. I mean, you could just keep getting better and better and better. Well, and also, if, you, if you're playing on the Pro Tour as well, you're making up the numbers. And now and again, you're getting battered, and the following week, you've got a Pro Tour, a development tour. You kind of forget about losing a lot quicker. The money certainly makes you forget quicker than anything. You know, the following weekend, you're turning up, and you're earning yourself a thousand odd pounds. Well, look, I mean, it, uh, Benito van der Pass loses out wow. in the final of the European Tour event, uh, the last one we had to Michael Smith. 
So instead of winning 25 grand, he's won just the 10 grand. But then I think it was the following weekend at the development tour, he made three finals and won one of them. So he's, he's earned a good five grand there. Well, it's not bad work if you can get it. Yeah, it's over 15,000 in uh, just over seven days. Don't you require 122? Not bad. Oh, misses the big number there, Van Dijen Boda. Well, he's made a right everywhere. hash up of that. I mean, but what a crucial time to throw real bad darts. And that's a good dart from Hendricks. Double ten he now wants. And a bit erratic on the doubles as the White Wolf. Game shot and Not so play. on the double five there, Nine though. Three two. Six leg dirt to throw first. Well, Dirt's lucky that it was on his opponent's throw, so it's not really punished him too much. 134. Yeah, he's got that crucial break that he wanted. And again, we talk about the quick throws, Dan. I mean, you know, he threw the, those three darts very quickly. And when you're switching all over the board, you know, that's when sometimes I just believe you should just take your time. It may be just a split second, but it just helps you, you know, get wow. your range if you're going from the top to the bottom and then back up to the top. And when you've got the line like that, then you can follow it up a lot quicker. Well, that was made to look very, very simple. It is 180s in three consecutive legs now for Dirk van Dijven Boda. That first nine average is pretty handy. It's not world class, but it's pretty handy. Can see. Finishing from both of these guys has been, well, it's left a little bit to be desired. But another strong leg again from Dyvon Burda. And he's going to give himself chances if he's outscoring his opponent to the degree that he is at the moment. Dirk, you require 53. So Dirk van Dyvon <laughs> Missed a big number again. 37. And it's another missed double, but he will return, looking at double eight. Hendricks, well, needs two trebles. And there'll be very little pressure on this double eight as Van Dijvenbode is to re-establish a two-leg lead and take another 16. step towards a second round encounter with Game James Wade, and that's exactly leg. what he does. The Van Dijvenbode, seventh leg, Leo to throw first. And again, a real strong leg on his throw from Diving Bird. Sixty. You find that, especially the Dutch, they're all very quick throwers, aren't they? <clears throat> and then we have the nine sets of the legs. And Thirteen and fourteen. Nothing wrong with those. Seventeens and the eighteens, and particularly the nineteen. Nothing particularly special, but. And Biden Voda won't mind. And you look at some of the players who have failed to make it through round one today. 100. The Pie Man didn't make it through. Andrew Gilding didn't make it through. 58. Stephen Bunting's not made it through. We, we always knew that R2 was good enough to beat Stephen Bunting, but we, but we have to say it, it was a shock. We, we, you know, the bookmakers would have had Bunting massively odds on. Well, particularly when you look at the way he's played, you know, the, the, just the last Euro Tour, for example. I mean, it was it was an inspired Ian White that managed to knock him out in the end, but it did take somewhere near Ian White's best to do so. He averaged 105 in that game. There was 180s flying around all over the place. We know what Stephen Bunting can do. Former world champion, of course. Jihan Artut is a very, very dangerous customer. Take him lightly at your peril. I'm a very happy customer at the moment. I'm sure he is. A few hundred Germans in here tonight who seem pretty wow. happy with it as well. He could be joined by another German in the next round. Michael Rosenau steps up in the final game of the night against Jamie Lewis. Leo Hendricks. Maximum. Maximum. There you go. Fifty-eight. Leo, you require one hundred and sixteen. 
Oh, what a couple of visits this is from Leo Hendricks. Seventy-six. Nearly six perfect darts, but he's going to return. Eighty-four. It's scrappy. Leo Should have left himself fewer 40. than that. It's what I said about you know switching from top to bottom, then back up to the top. And with the way that Hendricks has been messing around Game on doubles, though he doesn't there, Van Dijvenberg yeah, could have been made to pay for that. As it is, doesn't matter. 4-3. And Dirk still has the advantage here. Needs to make it count. Wow. And does so. Well, as I said before, the last two legs on his throw have been very strong from Dijvenberg. And he knows a couple more holes, and that sees him home. 16. You don't want to be getting involved in tight little games. Go and ask John Henderson and Andrew Gilby. Hendo pretty much needs to have a lie down, and he won it. Well, there's been a few like that today as well. Oh, Mensor Sulevich scraping over the line in his against Mike Dedeker. Devin Peterson against Nathan Aspinall couldn't have got much closer. Well, 16. Yeah, Nathan would. Um, Feel that he'd give that away. Obviously, 5 3 up against yep. Devon. 93. Yeah, Devon did just up his game a little bit in the closing stages, and that Nathan couldn't quite match him in the end. But, but he's literally quite... throwing three great darts at a crucial time, mm -hmm. and that, that's what gets you over the line. I think we see quite a bit more Nathan Aspinall, though. 60. He's actually been improving over the last two years so much. It, you know, it's good to see as well. The youngsters coming through, we say it so often. And we've, we've given them the opportunity, which is great. Yeah, Hendricks shouting at himself to try and produce something in this leg. More like it, but he's not down to a finish. So six darts from here for Dirk van Dijvenboda. That doesn't help him. That doesn't help him. That does. 66. Still may only give him a dart at the bullseye, that those. So Hendricks needs to find one treble. If he hits a treble, he may go the 25 route. No, may still even go the 25 route. 60. Don't you require yeah, eight A lot of players four. would go the 25 route there to give him two darts at a one treble for a double. Uh, the bullseye. 59. There's a chance here for Hendricks. Leo, you require 120. Team Leo Hendricks there. Yeah, one, one treble in two darts gives him a dart at bullseye, but at 116, we'll give him the dart at the double. And he's not going to do that, so Ivan Boda comes back. 89. There's pressure. There's pressure Don't on you this. require 25. Gets it. Dirk van Dijvenboda goes within a leg Boda. of the next round. Ninth leg, Leo to throw first. Game on. Well, he can't afford physics like this, Leo Hendricks. He's got to win the next three legs. Nine score. And that is a nightmare for him. Can Dirk van Dijvenboda jump on it? It looks like he can. He is doing. He's all over him. He is all over him. That's a fourth maximum for Dirk van Dijvenboda. And I think Leo Well, that's Hendricks. what you do, don't you? When, when your opponent goes off with that, you just absolutely pound him. 81. Well, kind of astounded that last dart went in because Leo Hendricks had a bit of the look of a broken man after those first three visits in this leg 62 there you see four maximums for diving boater overall average of 90 it's solid if unspectacular but it's good enough right now against leo hendricks he's got to up his game considerably if he's going to wow. turn this around doesn't look like it's going to happen but it's a weird old game is darts it certainly is 82. Just hanging on in there. One treble with each visit. 
It forces Hendricks put into a big score. Now is that second one in or it's just above? One of them. That's unlucky. One of one of those other two darts could have easily been in. Seventy-seven. Took a little bit of extra time on that third dart as he switched up to the 18s and it paid dividends. Gets him down to 100, can do it in two darts, and that will be for the match for Dirk van Dijk and Boda. Eighty-five. Dirk, you require 100. So Tony wants, well, he can still do it. He's looking at the 19s and doesn't get it. So, oh, thirty-four. Scruffy, yeah, scruffy stuff. Well, you know, he may only get one dart on a double now. I mean, one minute he kicks off with a 180. Hendricks kicks off with nine. Dovenboda kicks off with a 180. You think, yes, this should be game over. And now Dovenboda's gone and missed the big number. Well, if he does find the trouble 20 here, there's pressure. And he 86. has, and there is. And now Don't Van Dovenboda, 66. 66 for the match. Lovely dart. Oh, wonderful. Well, 100 was scrappy, it was messy. But it's the man with a big pack butcher earrings, Dirk Van Dijvenboer, who makes his way into the second round. He will take on James Wade, the number two seed and multiple major champion. Leo Hendricks, an early exit for him. And we have one more place in round two to be decided. It's going to go to either Jamie Lewis, the Welshman, or it's going to go to Michael Rosenhauer. Looking to be another German into the second round following the success of Jihan Artur this evening. We're going to grab a few words with Dirk van Dijvenboda. And then we will crack on with the final match of the first round here at the European Darts Open live from the Maritime Hotel in Dusseldorf. We morgen also wiedersehen. Eine Partie haben wir noch. Das Match von Michael Rosenhauer gegen Jamie Lewis aus Wales. So, Applaus für Leo Hendricks. Yeah, congratulations. Satisfied with the first, satisfied with, with, with the match? Yeah, of course, a win is a win. It's always going to be happy, you know? But uh, first leg, I missed four darts. And if, if, if you get the first leg to break his throw, you get confident to win the match. Like, I break his throw straight away, keep my own throw, I'll win it. And then you miss four darts. I miss a 12 dollar and three darts after it. And it's bad for your confidence because all the match through you get nervous because you thought I was nervous in the first leg. I didn't finish it off. I could have finished it off straight away. But I think I was 3 1 up. And you're thinking, yeah, I should have been, I could have been 1 0 up because he missed met doubles as well. And, uh, I took it out as well. I think I was a little lucky, but uh, at the end I was the deserved winner. I think. When did you get the idea to, to have such a walk on? When, when did you thought, oh, that, these are my moves? <laughs> to be honest, uh, I want to go harder, but it's not like, you want to keep it on for the crowd as well, but I like, like, harder music as well, like, party razor, people might know him, he's really hard music. But uh, I spoke with him and he said, it would be nice to be, like, if you take my walk on, I said, well, uh, you, you've got some bad words in it, so I can't do that, man. So I just take a little softer, and people think it's really hard, but it's always harder, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. Dirk, see you tomorrow. Dirk van Dievenboden. And book his place in the second round. But to do so, he's got to overcome a seasoned campaigner in Michael Rosenauer. Rosie, as he's known. And what's likely to be quite a partisan crowd. Dan Dawson in the commentary box for your final game of the evening session alongside me, Rob Malarkey. Yeah, Jamie Lewis has uh, caught the eye on occasion in Europe this year. Let's not forget his uh, World Cup teammate, Mark Webster, is through to oh, course, uh, round yes. two. So let's not, do, let's not do Wales or Webby a disservice, by the way. Let's just get that out in the open first of all. Uh, so it will be nice for Lewis if he can join his World Cup teammates in the second round tomorrow. The less said about their World Cup campaign, the better, by the way. Yeah. Hong Kong and all that. 
not quite akin to uh, England losing to the USA in 1950, but you get the idea. Anyway, Jamie Lewis, good European record in patches, runner-up in Gibraltar in 2013, reached the semis in Jib earlier this year as well. And uh, here and there has Thank been showing gentlemen. good, leg, good Jamie signs of form, both in Europe Game and on. at home as well. But up against him tonight, Michael Rosenauer, a man with plenty of credentials. We'll talk about those in a moment or two. Lewis getting us underway. 95. Yeah, Jamie Lewis with uh, a particularly long dart. It's like a scaffolding pole. He's swinging at the ball. Does mean if he gets the first couple in the right place, it's just a huge target to aim for. Of course, there is the opposite where he gets it in the wrong place. And he can easily <laughs> follow them. Yeah, Jihan Artu flying the flag for Germany tomorrow. Will Rosenauer be joining him? He's lost a flight there, but the points are on the board. Yeah, stunning win for Jihan Artu against Stephen Bunting. Doesn't get any easier for him. He's got to take on another Premier League star in Kim Highbrakes. Albeit a relegated one. Well, yes, granted. Still, 13th seed up against it uh, tomorrow, Jihan. But I thought he deserved a victory of sorts 36. somewhere along the line here this uh, this season. I know he's had a couple of wins before on the European circuit, but he was long overdue a win, I thought. Well, he's, a, he's a very, very tricky customer, Jihan Artil, when he's on form. Difficult man to beat. Decent leg so far from Jamie Lewis. It's decent enough, although here comes Michael Rosenauer. Here comes Michael Rosenauer. Well, Lewis will be favourite here, but do not be surprised at all if Rosenauer causes him one or two problems. He is... 96. Michael, you According to many observers, the best soft tip player that Germany has ever produced. One of the best in the world, in fact, on the electronic board. The stats back it up as well. 48. In terms of what he's achieved on the soft Jamie tip. Require 48. Varias Double 16. Last start. Game First leg on the board, the Jamie Lewis. Lewis. Jamie made Lewis, to sweat for it, though. First. Game on. Made to sweat more than he already is. It's still a very, very warm evening, both inside and outside the arena. Inside especially. Wow, yeah, see? And that just endorses what I've just been saying. Thanks, guys. Bang on cue. I think it was this tournament last year, so 12 months ago, where Michael Rosenauer just decided, after not playing darts for quite a while, yeah, I'll come back and give it a go. That's Jamie Lewis. Well, I'm right out of 40. Fires in at 40. Just sort of emerged from the wilderness, smashed his way through qualifying. And lots of bewildered German dart players wondering where he'd come from and why he decided 41. to do so at that particular moment mm. and then get drawn against them. Well, Rosenauer eventually lost 6-2 to Chizzy in the second round of this event last year. Beat Mensor in the first round, 6-5 as well. So, you know, just to put that in a bit of perspective. Mm, and here he comes. I've got one other Rosenauer stat up my sleeve. Can you guess what it's about or what it concerns? It's about his hair. Uh, no, it's oh. about a very, mm, um, you yeah. know, talk about Brendan Dolan being a history maker. I think I Rosenauer can claim to be a history maker as well. well I, 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 I've been doing my homework, you know. I, uh, I can't wait for this. I love a stat. Right. It's all about the sizzle and not the sausage at the moment, so I'll leave you <laughs> hanging on. 83. 83. No sets sizzle there, but it sets it up nicely for uh, Rosenauer. 56 to level things up. Lewis not on a finish yet. 
16 for tops. There's the 16. To get the crowd on side. 36. It's on hold. Jamie Maybe Rosenauer is giving us a bit of sizzle and no sausage just yet. Wow. Or Wurst in this case. <laughs> Travel 19 for Jamie Lewis. Not going to happen. Rosenauer returns. 59. Double ten he wants. We require 20. To level things up at one apiece here at the Maritime Hotel in Dusseldorf. Just beginning to uh, look a little bit nervy and edgy on those doubles, but it is one apiece. Just the one whitewash then today, and it was a very unlikely one. Wes Newton 44. winning his match 6 0. I think that was the final match of the uh, afternoon session, beating Gerwin Price. Yeah, man who's... You wouldn't have had that down as a whitewash. If I'd said to you first thing today, write down one whitewash today, who's it going to be? Don't you would get... not have said that one. Don't get me wrong, Wes Newton's a two time major finalist, but Gerwin Price has been playing some very, very good stuff for a, a little while now. He's forced his way into the match play. He'll be making his debut at Blackpool next week. 57. Wes Newton will not be there. Particularly disappointing for Wes, of course, because it's his local major, if you like. In from Fleetwood. Wow. Just give me the nod when you want the uh, rosy stat, by oh, the way. Yeah, I, I, you've made me wait long enough. <laughs> I can't. Well, Tell with, me. It, with it, 356 400, I think now is a good sign, actually. 59. Yeah, 59 from Lewis. Uh, Rosenauer, the first man to qualify for both the PDC and BDO. I say qualify, and BDO World Championships in the same year. 43. Won through the qualifiers for the Lakeside and then qualified by right for the PDC Worlds through the German Darts Corporation Order of Merit. Went down the PDC route though, and then came close to uh, causing a major upset against Mervyn King. Didn't yes. quite come off. Went all the way to a tie break, but King came through. What year was that? Don't know. <laughs> Does it matter? I mean, what more do you want? Can't let you. It must have been a job. Must have been, it must have been in the last six me. years or so. You've teased me. Done everything there, Dan. Apart from give you one minor detail. Doesn't really matter when it was. Surely. He was the first. Well, the only thing that matters right now is that it's one apiece between Jamie Lewis and Michael Rosen out. Yeah, it's that sort of leg where we've had a good long chat and it's still 15 darts and only one player's on a finish. But there's not much between them. And we'll need the travel. Doesn't get it. Doesn't get it. 2008. I said in the last six years, so I was wrong. <laughs> 60. Jamie Aguirre, 114. 114 for Jamie Lewis for 2 1. This is only a hold of throw, though. 14 he wants. For double top. Game Gets it. Of third leg. Well, Jamie Lewis, a standout visit in that leg of darts. Look at age to get down to a finish and then takes out a ton plus. I've heard a rumour that you bumped into Neil Armstrong once at a pub and he told you that he was the first man on the moon and you said, what year wow. was that? And he said, it doesn't matter, I was the first man on the moon. Not quite the same comparison. I want the... I'm, I'm not a man who enjoys half a story. Wow. <laughs> uh, two one here, on throw, effectively. Rosenauer looking to level things up, hold his throat. Chance here for Lewis to uh, press on though with 55 for Rosenauer. That this is, of course, well, for the 14. final spot in the second round. The last 32 of the European Darts Open. The winner of this has the unenviable task of taking on the world number one Michael Van Gogh in a man who, until the last 16. European Tour event, was unbeaten. He had a perfect record on the European Tour. Not a problem for Jamie Lewis, that by the way. Shall I tell you why? <laughs> yes, please do. <laughs> Jamie Lewis's Fair big priority, yeah. big concern this weekend was avoiding Terry Jenkins. He lost 6-4 to the ball in the second round in both Riza and in Munich. So he's not bothered about facing Van Gogh and he just wow. wanted to avoid Jenkins and he's done that. Anything else is a bonus. Anything else is a bonus. Well, he, he wouldn't meet Terry Jenkins until the semi-finals either. He'd uh, take that right now. Theoretically speaking. 
should they Nine keep on winning? Terry's here, by the way. He's arrived, even though he's not in action until tomorrow. He was in the practice room earlier. He was uh, being asked to put official photographs Jamie from the PDC. 114 went in the last leg. The 108 is not going. 56. Will the 111? Michael, we require 111. For a hold of throw. Big moment in this match. Yeah, needs it as well with Lewis ready to pounce on 52. Oh, he's missed a big number. He needed the 71. 14 and he's hit the 11. Jamie and Michael Rosa now. That is a rookie mistake from a veteran. Double 16. Oh, that's awkward. The way his darts kick up, and it, we mentioned before, it's a big dart. Oh, and I 20. think that has played a part in him Michael not finding his way to the little green bit there. Michael Rosen out, sigh of relief, but he's got to close this out. It's and he does. Nice. Leg. Rather emphatically. Michael Rosen out. Fifth leg, Jamie, to throw first. Game on. Sorry, that took there was because the internet's gone down again. Nothing to do with Lewis's uh, first visit to the board. No, level ton. Probably take that in this game. Neither of these guys have really lit the blue touch paper as yet. Rosenau hit a 180 in the first leg, still lost it. Jamie Lewis hit that 114 checkout in the third leg. We've had four consecutive holds of throw. Keeps on going like that. Then Jamie Lewis finds himself in the next round because he has the advantage of throwing first. Well, the average is uh, nothing to write home about at the moment. Pretty even, Stephen. 76, 77 or so. 41. There's another dip in the average for Lewis as well. 59. Not quite the crescendo to the evening perhaps we were hoping for, but... Maybe Rosenauer can raise the roof with a second German victory of the night. It's still a possibility, two apiece. Yeah, well, at the moment, they are both playing like a couple of guys who are on last at 11 o'clock at night in a boiling hot room. 95. Can Jamie one of them step it up? Jamie Lewis. That'll do for him. Mentioned that potential meeting with uh, Van Gerwen. Well, Van Gerwen lying in wait for the winner here, assuming Lewis does get through. And it's a big assumption at the moment. Worth noting that, or worth mentioning that Lewis beat Van Gerwen last year in the semi finals of a UK Open qualifying. Requires 64. Then lost to. Uh, Sulovic in the fifth round of the UK Open itself a month later. 48. Well, Michael, there's a chance here for Rosie. An outside Need. chance, but a chance nevertheless. You're right. Needs the treble 20. And that first dart was absolutely no guide for him. 65. That probably played a part in him Jamie not finding 60. the treble bed. So Jamie Lewis, three clear darts at double eight now. Work his way in from there. Getting closer. Eight score. Mm. Michael, you require 65. Well, he doesn't want to hit the bullseye here. Mm. Well, he would have liked the 25, mind, but he still gets a dart at tops. 25. Missed opportunity. Would have been the first break eight. of the match. Jamie Lewis now. Double four. Well, Rosenau has simply got to take chances like that when they come along. Game show, the because fifth Lewis leg. has duly finished Jamie it off there. And we continue to go first. with throw here. Lewis back in front 3 2. Approaching the halfway stage of this final match of the day. Opening day of the European Darts Open here in Dusseldorf. Well, that is an absolute horror show in terms of the averages. Take my word, I don't want to look at him. 
they should have put a warning at first for those we are, we are past of the watershed so low it's, averages, it's yeah. okay look away now he did storm through qualifying albeit a few weeks ago Jamie Lewis he beat Jeff Batham and Steve Douglas only dropped five legs in the process and he did qualify for Risa as well you mentioned he lost in the second round to Terry Jenkins Michael Rosenauer had to play three games in his qualifying campaign last night that was done here at the Maritime Hotel he saw off Ooh. 80. Sorry. Just the 80 point not touching the board. Yeah. yeah. So off uh, a couple of guys. Daniel Zugler, who we have seen on the wow. European tour a number of times, the Flame, beat him 6 4. Beat Martin Schindler 6 3. And, and Martin's he's only a young lad. Young German guy, obviously, his host nation qualifies as Jamie Lewis looks to fill this up wow. and wow. has to settle for a ton 40. Martin Schindler also works for PDC Europe, so. If he doesn't make it through the qualifiers, he then has anyway. to go and work on the door. Is that who it is? Wow. I didn't realise. I've made the connection now. I know who you mean. Right. He's only he only looks about twelve. You can, I mean beating beating little Martin Schindler. It must feel like kicking a puppy in the face. <laughs> well, I'll take your word for that, Dan. I assume again. I'm having to say this a number of times this evening. Troublingly, Jamie Lewis down to a finish though on the rose now throw. 57. 57 gets thrown there down to Shanghai. Well, Lewis, he took out 114. 160 is a different matter entirely. But he's looking at the 20s. Mm. It's on. It's on. It's nice as well. It's a good light. Mm, a little bit unfortunate. It was just a little bit low in the treble bed for him. But. 100. Well, a ton. We can get him two darts at double top if he returns. Rosen air, 120. Can he take it out? He could. He could. Game and he has Michael man. Rosenauer. Michael well, well, well. It's another leg where it's been pretty pedestrian stuff until the end. And then the ton plus finish is fired in. We're three apiece here. Could be another game going all the way. Thought that would have got the crowd going more than it did, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Suffering from fatigue and heat and lager. But he's just pulled off a 120 Shanghai checkout on the 20s and it 41. didn't really get the reaction I was hoping for. I think he was wanting a bigger reaction as well, just to get the crowd on side, but not to be. And he might well have just been scared into silence by Dirk van Dijvenbode's antics on stage just 76. a short while ago. Like watching Donkey Kong stomp around. I thought he was going to chuck a barrel at someone. Well, it's been a lengthy evening session. Three matches going the distance. Mensor Sulovic in a cracker against Mike De Decker. John Henderson in that war of attrition with Andrew Gilding. Wow, Devin wow, Peterson beating 40. Nathan Aspinall by the odd leg in 11 as well. Wins also tonight for Alan Norris, for Joe Cullen, for Jihan Artuk, and for that man, Dirk van Dijvenbode. Will it be Lewis or Rosenauer? Well, we'll find out in the next, what, 10 minutes or so? Maybe longer. 75 scored, so he looks at the 18s and he set that up wonderfully. This is by some distance. Strongest leg in the match. Got to finish it off though. Double eight. There's an awkward lie that as well. 12 score. Well, I hope here for Rosen. Michael, you require 100. A glimmer off. Tough shot, this. Well, too tough. Nice right, set up tops. Jamie Lewis can't afford to mess around here. It's awkward with his darts. They do kick up a long way and they are massive. Oh, can he find a way through? All right, it's always going to be difficult. It's always going to be very, very difficult. Michael Rosenau now double top for the first break of the match to put himself in the driving seat in this one. And he gets it. Michael Rosenau goes into the lead for the first time. Well, he was well adrift there. Lewis, I think, with six missed uh, darts or missed doubles there. Yep. He left himself 16 after 12 darts. Couldn't get the job done. There you see, Jamie Lewis, three out of 17 on his doubles. You're going to have to score 
excellently to win games with that sort of finish in, but that's not a bad start. Yeah, First if you maximum want, for Lewis. If you want to win back the throw, that's the uh, perfect time to do it. See, he has outscored Rosa now, but the overall average is pretty much 45. the same as his opponent. It's those missed doubles that have cost him. Rosa now's finishing has actually been all right. It's just taken him well, a few eons to get to a double. 60. Well, there's a lesson in uh, not giving up lost causes as well for uh, Rose now. He was well adrift in that seventh leg, but even though Lewis was left with just 16 after 12 darts, six missed doubles later, and Rose now stole it. Oh, he stormed back into this one here, though. Look at this! Two maximums in the leg from Jamie Lewis, and maybe just getting broken there has woken him up and mm. kicked him into life. 96, Jamie On his run to the final in Gibraltar a couple of years ago, he did show that he's got the bottle, Jamie Lewis, to deliver when it really counts. He doesn't need to go for the 12 and bullseye route here, so I think it will be treble 10. And there it is. Oh, Thanks, wonderful. 12 data out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Jamie Lewis, Lewis first. breaks Come back. On. Two maximums, 12 data. Very, very nicely done, Jamie Lewis. Now, can wow. he kick on? Can he push on from there? Well, it's 5 2 into the trouble. 5 to start 50. with. Six legs without a break, and then we have two on the spin, four apiece. Best of three match effectively now for a place in the second round. And a meeting against the world number one, Michael Van Gerwen, tomorrow. That match will be in the 60. evening session, the fourth match of tomorrow night's activity. Yeah, we do have a schedule for you. We'll run you through it in a moment. We'll just see if this will be a 140 for Jamie Lewis. Wow, yes, it is. 40. That evening session tomorrow night, by the way. This tasty. Tell as it us comes. more, Mr. Malarkey. Well, Van Gerwen against either Lewis or Rosen. Our fourth match of the evening session. The evening session starts with Michael Smith, Riza champion against Mensor Sulovic. Uh, James Wade, number two seed, against Van Dijvenbode. Uh, also tomorrow night, Chizzy Whitlock, two time finalist here. And Peter Wright, the defending champion, rounds things off against Devin Peterson. And tomorrow afternoon as well, eight crackers to look forward to. The action starts at one o'clock local time. First match of the day, just in pipe against Kevin McDyne, the first winner of the day today as well. Uh, Terry Jenkins, European Tour finalist this year. He's in action against John Henderson. That'll be a decent one. Uh, Benito van der Pass, finalist in Riza as well, is on the hockey. And so too, Mervyn King, Rob Thornton and Ian White, semi-finalist in Riza, looking to go one better maybe, who knows, here in Dusseldorf. Well... There's have I wet the appetite enough there? Uh, you certainly have. You certainly have. And I have to say, after his performance, well, there's a couple of guys, after their performances today, I cannot wait to see more of. I think that the uh, Yellow Clarsen taking on Dave Chisnell could be an absolute stormer tomorrow evening. Yeah, Clarsen, Chizzy, Sulovic, Smith. Two that just leap off the page for a start off. Ian White, Alan Norris could be a bit special as well. Right, Peterson too. Yeah, everywhere you look, there's some serious Jamie games Green here at the European Darts Open. Six. Jamie Lewis has got six darts from here. Michael Rosenau has had a couple of horrible visits. Made a real mess of things after being decently placed. 58. A trudge to the board for the young Welshman. He fails to find the treble that he was after, but he should get one dart at tops when he returns, at least. Might get two at double 12. Jamie requires Rosenau's on 120 and he took that out in the sixth leg. It's only going to be one dart at tops. He's not moving, so he thinks there's room on the right-hand side and he finds it. Leg. He finds it, Jamie, Jamie Lewis. Lewis. He is one leg away. Yep, five, four up, having been four, three down, Lewis. Rosenau could stop him in his tracks wow, here, though. Settles for the 140. Well, it's kind of got the same feel about it, this game, as the Henderson-Gilding match earlier on, mm. where... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Wow, Neither guy played anywhere near their potential. We went all the way to a deciding leg. Both men mismatched darts. Could come down to 
who holds their nerve. But Jamie Lewis can break those now in this leg, and that's going to be very difficult when he's just kicked off ton 40, ton 40. But if he could, it would save him the nerves of a deciding leg shootout. Looking likely, though, that Rosenau is going to be first to a double in this leg. And he is. Lewis needs to register something here, hasn't done it so far. 58. Michael, you require 164. 58 music to the ears of Michael Rosenauer. But still with uh, a lot to do here, Rosenauer. Lewis needs to put the pressure back on if he can. Does so with a ton 40 there. And all of a sudden he's back in this leg. 21 scored, leaves him 87. So he'll come down for the treble 17 for double 18. Gets oh. the treble. Gets a double, 108 checkout from Michael Rosenau, and his finishing has been pretty good all the way through this match. If he is given a chance by Jamie Lewis in this deciding leg, it could well be curtains for the Welshman. Could well be, here we go, another 6-5 for you, but which way will it go? Well, Lewis could have done with more than that. Now Rosenau, a big score here, just to put the pressure on, oh, well... See it in Rosenauer's face and his body language, what he thinks about that. Lewis on. 78. With 50, Rosenauer just inching ahead, but hasn't quite won over the darts yet. Well, Jamie Lewis, on his run to the final in Gibraltar, he had a couple of 6-5 wins, Kevin Painter and Adrian Lewis. Big name scouts, particularly within the context of it. We talked a couple of years ago as Jamie Lewis is more of an emerging player as he mm. is now. But he had a habit in those games. He hit maximums in the deciding legs of both of those. When it really counted, he produced. Can he do the same here? He has the advantage of throwing first. He's been let off by Michael Rose now in the first couple of visits here. And is this the moment when he kicks in? Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, he's, is he he's been let there? off and he's been given a helping hand as well by wow. Rose and Ella. And wow. Lewis is certainly making the most of it with a ton force. He's got a significant cushion now. Rosenauer can't land the punch at the moment. He might a great deal be. in it, those averages overall. He has outscored Rosenauer, despite not scoring particularly well, but he has outscored him. He just missed doubles. He may not be able to afford to miss many more in this leg. Rosenauer is not really applying 60. the pressure, just the Jamie 60 to Jamie Lewis. At least so. six starts from here, potentially nine. Oh well, losing his way all of a sudden here, Lewis. 39. Thank you. He's still in this, Michael Rosenauer, if he can find a couple of trebles. Even a ton gets him to a finish, albeit a massive one. It's no use to him. 45. No use to him at Jamie all, Jamie Lewis. Oh, he's got six darts from here. At the very least, set it up. That's what he needs to be doing. 94. And he has done. He has done. So Jamie Lewis will return with three clear darts at double 12 for the match. What is Rose now going to be sat on? Well, he's going to get down to a finish of some sort. But it's not a great one. So Jamie, Jamie Lewis, it's been scrappy, 24. it's been messy, it's been downright ugly at times. But Jamie Lewis is looking at double 12 for the match. That's a decent marker. That's further away. Get but that up. finds the mark. And it doesn't Jamie produce Lewis. much of a celebration from the Welshman. But he has got the job done. It's been a bit of a subdued end to the evening. 11 legs. It is going to be pretty rapid fire stuff. Big Ben, Bonito van der Pass, the beaten finalist in Risa just a couple of weeks ago.
taking on Johnny Haynes, a man who is looking to make it through to the final day of action on the European Tour. Oh, for the first time in a long time. Dan Dawson in the commentary box for this one. Rob Malarkey alongside. Yeah, looking forward to this one. It looks on paper as though it should be a fairly routine, uh, well, 25 minutes or so for Benito van der Pass if it lasts uh, that long. But let's not do uh, Haynes at his service. Already has uh, one win under his belt this weekend, of course. Beat Christian Serta by six legs to four. But this is a very, very different proposition for the 50-year-old from Swindon, as you say, Van der Pass, a finalist in Riza three weeks ago. Uh, but apart from that, it's been fairly hit and miss for uh, Van der Pass. A man elevated into the top 16 as a result of the withdrawal of Gary Anderson. I say elevated into the top 16, made one of the top 16 seeds. The unfortunate thing, as far as Van der Pass is concerned, that should he win this, he could well face Michael Van Gerwen in the next round tomorrow, assuming he beats Jamie Lewis. But away from Riza, yeah, he had a second round defeat in Munich, lost to James Wade 6 0. Second round exit as well in Gibraltar. At the hands of Simon Whitlock. It all came together in Eastern Germany three weeks ago. Haynes has his work cut out here. Van der Pass with the advantage of throwing first as well. 93. It was on the European Tour that Benito really kind of announced himself in Gibraltar and he beat Michael Van Gerwen. It was only James Wade who beat him and even then he pushed him very, very close. He was throwing ton plus averages all the way through the weekend was Benito. And there were people saying, oh, this lad's going to be the next big thing. He had a little bit of a quiet 85. spell. But then the World Championships... He really kicked in. A run to the last 16. Beat Paul Nicholson and Dave Chisnell before losing out to 100. Robert Thornton. And he's going from strength to strength. The final in Risa, obviously, that was followed up by three finals in a single weekend on the development tour. He won one of them. Five grand he's won in that weekend, pretty much. He wouldn't have been allowed to play in them if he'd won Risa because he'd have been elevated into the top 32 in the world and you're not allowed to play the development tour. But. So it's actually worked out all right for him. It has. Working out quite nicely for Haynes here as well. He's uh, on a finish for an early break. He broke Christian Serta in the first leg of their match yesterday, although it took him 21 darts, only taking him 13 darts this time around. And Haynes is off the mark. So comparisons with his win yesterday. He followed up, by the way, that's... Uh, Opening leg against Serta with a 106 checkout to go 2 0 up, and from that moment on, he never really looked back. It was a 6 4 win in the end. It effectively went with throw from that moment on. Yeah, he was good when it came down. He got finishes around about 100. He was yeah. very effective. He had that 106, he had a 96, he had a one bang on 100. So, look, he was, he was pretty deadly once he got down to that sort of number. So an early concern for Van der Pass and his followers. Plenty of them here as well. They've pitched awkwardly, so he heads to treble 17 instead. Just a raise of the eyebrows there from Van der Pass in that last visit. Yeah, Haynes going about his business very nicely at the moment. Down to 140 after nine darts. Again, it's pitched downwards so he heads to 19s instead and van der Pass still not on a finish haynes however is well, he's not now well that should mean he gets at least one dart for a 2-0 lead 96 so he requires 62 Let's see which uh, route he goes. Well, well, it's trouble for ball, maybe. <laughs> well, you know, he's playing it safe. He has uh, room for manoeuvre here. Well, room for manoeuvre to an extent. Just he's, only, dart. he's only ever guaranteed one dart at a double. He got that in the end anyway, so... Benito now looking at tops himself. Ooh, not far away. So Johnny Haynes. Uh, Early 2-0 advantage. 
And that's exactly what he has. Mirror image of his match yesterday. Early break. Backs it up with a hold of his own throat. And Benito 2-0 down. Yeah, Michael Van Gerwen or Jamie Lewis awaits the winner of this one. MVG and Lewis will square off in the fourth game of this evening's session. Big names everywhere you look in the evening. Hybrex, Wade, Nine, Smith, six, six. Van Gerwen, Chisnell, Whitlock, Peter Wright. Peter Wright, the defending champion here, of course. Yeah, I've just been for a, a walk around the arena during the last match between Ace. Dolan and Walsh, and there's a real buzz about the place, even outside the seating area. Big, big crowd expected early. Nine, Not a six, seat to be had later on this evening. Weaker leg, this one from Johnny Hazy. Upturned palms, not quite sure what's gone wrong after a, a decent couple of opening legs from him. Yeah, nine darts to score, one, six, seven. One hundred and thirty-one. Van der Pass, on the other hand, is just stepping up his tempo. Mm, 26 followed by a 41 as well. It's not happening for Haynes in this leg. I think he wants to put this one to bed and forget all about it. It's on the Van der Pass throw, so no terrific damage done. If you are going to have a leg like this, best to have it when you're not throwing first. Just checking what Benito... Right, he needs 36. Sorry, he had a scoreboard error there. Wasn't quite sure what Benito needed. He hit 49 in that last one, so that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. And double 18 does the job for him. Well, Haynes again is uh, struggling to find troubles. First Dutchman we've seen in action so far today, Benito Van der Pass. Like the only Dutchman on the way in this afternoon's session. We've got some more this evening. Dirk van Dijven Bode, he'll be taking on James Wade. Some bloke called Van Gerwen. 26. Vincent van der Voort, Jelle Klaassen, standout performer of the opening round, Jelle Klaassen. I've said it before, he's going against Dave Chisholm. Could be an absolute belter. This one could turn into something a bit special though. Benito van der Pass coming back at Johnny Haynes. Trail 2-0. Now he's well placed to break back and level the match at two apiece. 36. Well, he's gone off the boil here. No doubts about it. Nine darts to score 95. 107. That's better remains. He's got room there to add another one. Fails to do so. Well, that will do for Benito. And with Haynes back where he is and consistently failing to hit big numbers, Benito can go any way he wants with this. Well, he wanted the treble 18 for double 18. He's hit the treble 8 there, yes. Yeah, rather than the treble 16. But it's fine. He'll come back looking at double 16. He'll be happy enough with that. Hmm, now then. Now then, Johnny Haynes. A bolt from the blue. Where did that come from? Just outside. Game shot oh, just inside, I should say. My eyes deceive me, then. Done well there, Benito, to find that with the last dart, because it looked like he blocked his path a little bit, moved right over to the left-hand side, or the gilding position mm. uh, on the hockey. It's, they're pitching at an angle, aren't they, Benito's darts? Yeah, they do, they do kick up a bit, which, I mean, it's got its advantages in certain situations. Makes it a bigger target to aim for, but there are other times, particularly when you're going for those ones down the bottom of the board, it can make things a little bit tricky. That's lovely, though. No surprise, he followed up with at least one. 
van der Pass has got the advantage back. Well, it's taken Van der Pass a while to get going, or a couple of legs to get going, but he's certainly found his range and his rhythm now. And he's in a very healthy position here in leg five as well for a 3-2 lead, having been 2-0 down. Yeah, so needing another treble there, Johnny Haynes to apply any real pressure. Benito looking at 81, he is going to go the 12 bull routes. Just have a look at Johnny Haynes. I don't think, I don't think, well, maybe he is, you know. He's saying, Johnny Haynes, I don't think you're going to take this out. It's a safe bet. But will it come back to bite him? No. I love a decline ball room when it gets rammed back down their throat. Love it. Not to be in this position, no. Bonito van der Pass takes a 3 2 lead and 2 0 down. Yeah, he's in a good place now. Three on the spin for the Dutchman. Haynes needs to put an end to this sequence. Fell it up, Benito. That's his first of the match. He's punishing him now, really is punishing him. Yet to see the nine dots on the European Tour this year. Didn't see one last year either. Saw one the year before when Ross Smith hit one in Gibraltar. Roby John Rodriguez was on it this weekend. Back to back 180s, but couldn't complete the job on 141. 53. And despite kicking off 180 in this leg, Johnny Haynes is down to a finish first. A big score here for Van der Pass will make things just a little bit testing for Haynes on 108. 81. We said earlier that it was around this mark that Johnny Haynes was very good in his yeah. first round win against Christian Serta. It's still possible. Needed that treble 18 for a shot at the bullseye. 82. But he set it up after a fashion. Now, is it 26 he wants? Johnny required 26. Well, it is. Dangerous one, double 13. Because he could halve this. Game but he hasn't. He takes it out at the third time of asking. And we are level once again at three apiece. And uh, Haynes there just well, underlining the fact that it's effectively back on throw now. And he's not out of this by any stretch of the imagination. Needs just to get another stronger foothold here. And he's certainly doing that with a 140 to start things off in leg seven. Nothing separating them at the moment. This time it's Van der Pass's turn to be under pressure. 81. Neck. Continue to go toe to toe here, yeah. yeah. Neck and neck in this, and here comes Benito. But well, I'm 40, it's good, but it's a big finish. Oh, now then, well, I'm right can't separate 40. them, Benito, cannot separate them. Two on forties each, and 81 each. But maybe a chance here for Haynes to steal a march on Van der Pass. And he has slightly. Van der Pass, though, in a good position here. 
double ten for a four three lead double five can be awkward 17. and he's a long way off there as well Johnny so Johnny Haynes for another break a second break of throw in this match against the number 16 seed and he takes it and Haynes gets his nose back in front once again he leads by four legs to three Oh, well, well, Johnny Haynes, he won the first two legs, then Benito kind of went on a bit of a charge as Haynes' form dipped. But he's coming back at the 22-year-old. As a reminder, this is the man who went all the way to the final in Risa in the last European Tour event, beating the likes of Michael Van Gerwen, Justin Pike, Kim Hybrex. 60. But the punk is the man with the advantage right now. Benito has to find a little bit more than that to put him under some more pressure. Sixty-two. Oh, he's One frustrated with that. There. Yeah, he's frustrated with that, Haynes. Ninety-six. So Van der Pass with a slight advantage. Another one of those will do nicely. 84. Not to be, but he's, well, still got work to do. 43. Well, he's left Johnny himself a big one. Funny Haynes has got a pretty big one of his own. 59. Well, he'll be hopeful of coming back. I'm sure he will, barring something special here. Yeah, and he will be back. Right, can Johnny Haynes hold his nerve here? 96 he wants. He can do it in two darts. There's Double one. 18. And he's done it in two darts. And Johnny Haynes, well, it's three consecutive legs for him now. And another one of those finishes round about the 100 mark. For yeah. Had a 96 yesterday, didn't he? Yeah, it's basically been the the foundation of his win in the opening round against Christian Serta. Once he gets down to that target, 60. he seems to appreciate it. I and mean, he's hitting 55% of his doubles, five out of nine on them. I mean, that is very, very good. Especially up against a player of Van der Pass's caliber as well. And we could be in for a bit of an upset here. Stephen Bunting crashing out in the first round yesterday. That was a surprise against Jihan Artu. A very capable player, Jihan Artu, but he's not a former world champion like Stephen Bunting. Jihan Artu is back in action this evening against Kim Hybrex, the Belgian. We do see another Belgian on the way in the penultimate game of this afternoon's session. That's Dimitri Vandenberg against Robert Thornton. But right now, it's Johnny Haynes looking to knock out the first seed of the weekend. And that'll help. That'll help. Second maximum of the match for Haynes. And it's come at a really good time as well. Now, another ton plus score here. And he could be in business. <laughs> it's, down, it's another 100 or so finish as well. It's trickier. He's going to need all three darts to do it. Can't do it in two like the 96 last leg. But can he see this off Johnny Haynes? 86 left. Well, he goes to the 18 route, gets it. Double 16 for the match. And Johnny Haynes hits 106 to knock out Benito van der Pass, the first seeded player to come or campaign to come to an end. Johnny Haynes, a 106 and a 96. Two of the checkouts here in the previous round as well. The man is hitting those targets very, very dangerously. And he is through. He's, he's his best run on the European Tour. Joint best. He's made the last 16 once before. But he will take on either Jamie Lewis or MVG. There will be no repeat of the Van der Pass Michael Van Gerwen game from Risa three weeks ago. Johnny Haynes, the punk, a big take head. a bow. Johnny, congratulations. Very strong, very good. Yeah, better than yesterday. Playing better than yesterday. So, carry on tomorrow now.
So reaching the Sunday, it's, it's getting interesting now, you know? Yeah, is it the first time that you reached the Sunday on, on the European tour? No, oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 it's not the first time. I played there in Holland, the first time I ever played in it last, last day. So, yeah, it's getting interesting now. Bring on the big boys. Michael van Gerwen could be the next one. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, you, would, you would love to play him? No, yeah, I'd love to play him. He's, he, I've played him once so far, he's done me, so i try to get revenge. Great, thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Johnny Ains. Of the afternoon session on day two in Dusseldorf. And after that, uh, shock for... Uh, the number 16 seed Benito van der Pass in the last match against Johnny Haynes. Haynes winning 6-3. We have the meeting of two former Lakeside World Champions, Mark Webster and this man, Steve Beaton. 20 years ago next year since Beaton was world champion. And Webster more recently. But here he is. Into the second round. After his uh, victory yesterday in the first round he was uh, one of the uh, early starters yesterday beat Stuart Kelly at 6-2 it was no problem this will be a, a tougher proposition for him against the number 15 seed Rod Harrington with me for this one how do you see this one going Rod? well I think Steve Beaton will be the favorite uh, we know what Mark Webster can do and, and I think like a couple of games we have seen this afternoon as it Mark Walsh being one Mark Webster's going to have to up his game a little bit if he's to beat Steve Beaton. Steve Beaton is he's very solid, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Um, but Webster, if he can get out the gate like he did yesterday, 13-15 was his first two legs to take a 2 0 lead, then all of a sudden you're putting your opponent on the back foot. And that's what Webster's got to do Thank here. Thank that gentleman. First they're both, they're the type of first player, game the if they get in front, they get very confident. They're easy leaders. But chasing is another matter. But the first dart for Webster's in the perfect position, and so is the second. 125. I do believe he kicked off with a 180's first three darts yesterday. Yeah. Absolutely right. 140. I mean, we saw the similarities with uh, Johnny Haynes' performance with his first round match and his second round match. He had a very early break or broke in the first game. Went 2-0 up. 140. Against... Uh, his first round opponent and against uh, Benito van der Pass. So, so the man he put to the sword in round one yesterday. But he loves those 106 96 checkouts. And Webster here already in the groove with another 140. Well, at the moment, the throw of Mark Webster is 100. Is Mark Webster 96. Keeping his body nice and still. It's the arm that's doing all the action. The problem with Marcus is as he brings it back in, well, he's got a double nine now for a 12 dart open Gage leg. On the first a 12 dart open Mark leg, Webster. it is. Second leg is Steve his body's first. dead still. Let all the action come from the wrist, and the elbow, and a little bit of the shoulder, but not too much shoulder. It's all wrist and elbow. And when he does that, when he keeps his rhythm, as we see it there, there we have it. Look, the head dead still. Once, if he keeps it like that, then the rhythm is good. It's when he One starts hundred. to move forward a little bit, and then his shoulder overtakes into the shot, and that's when he starts pulling them low, and that's when he loses his rhythm a little bit. 60. Well, it's fair to say Beaton hasn't really got going uh, so far today. Hasn't had too much joy on the European Tour this year. Hasn't gone beyond the third round in any of the five events he's played so far in 2015. 85. Reached the third round in both Venray and at Riza last time out. Came up against Michael Smith in the last 16 in Riza. Lost that one 6-3. Was battered by Kyle Anderson 6-1 in Venray. 131. Unfortunate perhaps to come up against Gary Anderson so early as well in Hildesheim. He reached the third round there as well. Lost that one 6-2. 140. That's more like it though from Beaton, but uh, Webster's on a finish here, the biggest of the lot. He's still on that finish as well. Let's see if he can finish it off. Well, he's two-thirds of the way there. Can he do it for a 2-0 lead? 145. Ooh, Would have been 2-12 dark legs. Oh, no, Steve Beaton's got to take this out. Needs to find the treble 20. He's got to move to the last to open up the treble 20. Has failed to do so. So Mark Webster's going to come back with two darts and a double. Now, 
Although we're in the very infancy of this game, it's such a crucial point for the game for Mark Webster. Got to take out the double 12. If he goes on to lose this game, he will look at leg two and go, do you know what, I should be 2-0 up. Yeah. yeah, he'll see it as a turning point. Tops he needs then for uh, one all score line. And he's underneath. Back. Mark Doesn't want to be chasing down to double three. That's a long way off. That's closer. Game and closer still. Mark Webster. See, the thing Third about Mark Webster Mark is Mark if you miss that, Steve Bite beat holds on to his throw and makes it one all then that's what can ruin your rhythm a little bit because you start thinking about I've missed like a dart and a double and all of a sudden you overthink what's happening but that's not going to happen with Mark Webster now he's just going to keep his head still keep the top half of his body pretty rigid just let that arm do the work 58 60 Well, Webster already is enjoying his best run of the year in Europe. He qualified for Gibraltar as well. He lost to uh, Christo Reyes in the first round, 6-2. And he's looking good here already for a, a place in the last 16. Another 180 perhaps on the way here. And there it is. Well, yesterday, he went off flying out of the gate, first two legs, but then lost his form a little bit. One hundred and eighty. But now Webster keeping his form up after twelve months, ninety-eight. Now treble eighteen, we're leaving the double twelve. Well, just a very big twenty. This will be up near the double top. Fifty-eight. Should have been near the double top. But a must for Steve Beaton on the one hundred and one. Yeah, he needs something here. Not to be for Steve. 60. Mark, he and he just, uh, well, the way he threw that last dart, there was a bit of anguish in that uh, throw. He's a bit annoyed Game with himself and he'll be leg. even more Mark annoyed Webster. now because Webster's Steve to hit throw tops at the first time of asking. And he's halfway there. Beaten responding well here, though. At the outset of leg four, can't afford to uh, slip up here on his own throw. Eighty-five. Webster's got a bit of support here, by the way. I've seen a couple of guys outside wearing whale shirts, so uh, they've made the journey over. One hundred and thirty-seven. To Dusseldorf for this one. Well, I see the the three guys dressed up as Simon Whitlock <laughs> here, with uh, attached goatees and everything, ponytails and all the paraphernalia that goes with it. It's a warm day to be dressed up as a zebra, by the way. That's another 65. one I've seen. Well, I think our co commentator Dan's got it right. Shorts and a thin shirt. I like to maintain a degree of 140. decorum, Steve though. Well, 160. I don't care, I'm going to be down in my shorts tonight. I think 140. It's a Not a pretty sight nowadays, but. <laughs> Well, beaten in a good position here to get off the mark. 99. Steve Urquhart, 20. Webster, though, waiting in the wings. Should beaten slip up here. Well, he's got one more dart at double five. 15. And he's halved it as well. So Mark this is Urquhart, awkward for beaten. Webster capable of taking this out. Well, more than capable now. Double 12 for a 4 0 lead. Double six. Well, nicely done and beaten just has no answers whatsoever to Mark Webster it at the moment. There's nothing he can first. do. Could so easily have got off the mark there and he's been punished to devastating effect. And 
Well, beaten already. Yeah, he's a beaten man. Yes, he's uh, two breaks to throw up. He's Mark Webster. He's actually equivalent to three because he threw first in the match. So Steve Beaton has got to break him three times. 99. Can't afford to miss opportunities like that. 140. Three missed doubles for Beaton in that fourth leg. And the average is uh, illustrating Webster's authority as well. Especially on the first line. He's getting out of the blocks quicker. He's getting himself into position quicker as well. Yes, what he's doing is put the pressure on from the first three downs. Well, that's enhanced his uh, first line average for Beaton. Yes, tidy from Mark Webster. He needs to take the 18. I mean, his 12th dart was at the double on that 18 dart leg. 55. Yeah, almost had that 170 check out as well, didn't he? In uh, leg two. 83. Stevie Aguilar, 126. Well, it's not over yet, this leg. Could be now. 101. Mark Aguilar, 140. Well, those three missed doubles were beaten in the last leg will give Webster encouragement here. He's got two darts at a double, only one now. He's looking edgy. Nine score. He's looking nervous, isn't he, as well, Beaton? Never really convinced me that. Well, the problem is when you're 4-0 down and you know your opponent's on a shot, that's when the pressure really sets in. He just moves to the left. Plenty of room to the left of that dart to pin this double top. 60. Stevie Aguilar, 16. Game well, shot finally takes out Steve the double Beaton. eight to put his first leg on the board. Sixth leg is Steve to throw first. Game on. That was one of the breaks to throw back. As I said, he's going to take Webster two more times if he's going to win this game. 100. To do with the spirit of Mensor Sulovic at this stage, couldn't he, Beaton? Well, Steve Beaton has it. Has he has got that mindset. He will never give up. This. Webster kicks off on another one eighty. Yes, you'll never see, see Steve Pete. He's, he's a good, good season professional. Sixty. Just gets up there, plays his own game, never gives up, gives it his all every time. Oh, now then, five perfect darts here for Mark Webster. Make that six. Could we be on course for the first? Nine data of the European campaign of 2015. Mark Webster 100. is two thirds of the way there. What has the Welshman got? Can he get the crowd on their feet once again? No, he can't. The ironic boos go round. 85. Well, he's done the right thing, though. He's pinned the treble. Yeah. And he gets a good round of applause as well for his efforts. Rodriguez went close yesterday. 83. Well, Webster there, Mark six Aguilar, perfect darts, 56. no nine dart finish, but it could be an 11 dart leg here for Mark Webster. Maybe 12. Game 12 it is. He Webster. breaks back straight away. Seven legs, Mark to throw first. Well, he's stepping up to throw for the match, and we have to say, Rob, this is as good a performance as we've seen out of Mark Webster for quite a while. Game on. And for me, his action has been the best I've seen it for a few years. Yeah. You know, the arm is doing all the work, the head is not moving forward, the body just a Whoa. tad, but nothing to worry about. Good, strong left arm. And Webster, well, he wouldn't be human 96. right now if he wasn't counting his chickens. He'll play, should he finish it off here, either James Wade, his lookalike, or Dirk van Dijvenbode in round three tomorrow. They meet later on. 100 there's no stopping him, is there? Plus three, one eight is in the last two legs. James Wade will be watching this and... 140. He'll be given plenty of food for thought. He's got work to do himself, Wade, first of all, before we can start thinking about facing Webster. Well, Mark Webster, when he played in the Premier League... 100. 
only had one win, and that was against Adrian Lewis. I think it was in Brighton, and he had a, just on 110 average. But the rest of the time, you know, 120 last year, he, got, he got battered, and when he was on a down, of course, you're, every week you're playing a top player. But he could finish it off here and now. Double 14. Double 14 it is. That's as good as I've seen Mark Webster for quite a while. Absolutely ruthless performance from Mark Webster. Where do you start with that one? A 12 dart leg to start things off. He almost checked out at 170 in the second leg. He almost had a 9 dart finish as well. Mark Webster, a very, very eye-catching winner today against the number 15 seed, Steve Beeson. An average of 101.56. Not too shabby on the checkouts either. Four 180s in there to boot as well. And he will be a Stack very dangerous opponent for Webster, potentially FB James Wade, the number two seed in the third round. The Welshman threw in double quick time, winning 6-1 against Steve Beaton. A terrific King and Wes Newton, both former Premier League players, both guys who've won on the European Tour. They've got pedigree, these two. It's fair to say, though, Mervyn King is a man who is comfortably keeping a hold of his place in the world's top 16, whereas Wes Newton has been struggling to maintain his place in the, well, pretty much the top 32. That's going to be in danger. He's not at the match play next week, Wes Newton. But we have seen a stunning display from Mark Webster, which has hinted that perhaps he could be back on the way up. Maybe it's a weekend of renaissances. Dan Dawson in the commentary box and Rod Harrington alongside me. Yes, it was a fine performance. It was good to see from Webby. Uh, for me, it, it was the action um, that was really good. It's as good as I've seen it for a, a couple of years. You know, just let the arm do all the action. That's what you've got to do in darts. I know we have the exceptions of the rules like John Henderson and the, and the likes, but uh, if you look at the people that are winning the majors, they don't move a lot. The only thing that moves is that arm. But coming back to this game, yeah, a good performance from Wes Newton yesterday, and he gentlemen. needs to find First some form lane, because he's going to lose Game ranking on. points for not being in the match play next week, which is going to drift him even further, which means he's probably not going to be in the Grand Prix, which is going to drift him further. He'd probably still scrape into the World Championships, but um, that slippery slope 83. is very slippery. And Mervyn King, one of the old tough companions, a bit like Terry Jenkins, you don't see him throw many bad games. Yeah, I mean, Merv is 100. one of the nearly men in the PDC, but, I mean, prior to making the switch, and world master, international darts league, won both of them. And he's looking to fill it up here. 100 and and does so. First 180. His second visit to the board, Mervyn King. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems mad that Wes Newton, a man who made the quarterfinals of the match play last year and the semi-finals of the Players' Championship finals, doesn't even make the match play this year. It is that quickly that your fortunes can turn in this 100. game. Well, the rankings are very fair. You play well, you get rewards. You don't play well, well you take your eye off the ball and you will get hammered. 140. Yeah, this first, game, well, this game here, Dan, it's, it's going to be interesting because if, if Merv, you know, gets a, a quick lead, it'll be interesting to see how Wes Newton form and throw stands up. Yeah, I mean, he saw off Gerwin Price in his opening round, and it was a whitewash. Beat him 6 0. And that's Gerwin Price, who is at the match play, by the way. 100. Mervyn, you require 40. So he, he wasn't put under pressure. You would think Mervyn King is likely to put him under some at least. Game shot on the first leg. And a 15 Mervyn dart King. leg and a hold of throw to start Second things off. West to throw first. Game on. Well, I was just about to say, this is where the little bit of luck needs to come in if Mervyn had missed that. Where's Nick sit? But he's gone off <coughs> with a great score. 82. Where's Newton, a two time major finalist. The European Tour event he won was back in 2012. One of his eight PDC Tour titles. 44. We talked about his consistency, you know, he, he kicks off with a 180 and then just ruins it. And it is that dart that drifts 
into the five. And then he can't find anything from that, so that's overcompensating. 81. But what he's done is he's, he's let Mervyn King back in the leg. Mm. Mervyn King, the number nine seed. He was seated in Risa last time out, but lost his opening match to young Max Hopp. Fifty-nine. Mervyn, you require one hundred and sixty-one. Well, that's not going to help because if Mervyn King could hit one treble on this visit, he's got a very good chance of going two nil up. That's exactly what he's done. One hundred and twenty-five. That's the perfect setup. Well, so he's put the pressure on, and again, after 12 darts, Mervyn King is on a double. And Wes Newton is not going to take the shot out, so King comes back to double 18 for a 2 0 lead. And this is where the consistency will get shown up, Danny. If Mervyn King takes this out, then it's a. Well, now there's a chance here. No score. And we Where's talked about the second 93. leg in the previous match that Mark Webster. Still went on a one, but if it had lost, it could have changed the whole game. But he's taken the aggressive route, but he's got to get a dart at double 16. 77. Now, Merv Mervyn bust that 36. last time out. I mean, he could have left himself, you know, double four, or, but he wants the 18s. He's backed himself to hit it. Game shot a second. And it's paid off. Mervyn King. Third leg is Mervyn to throw first. Game on. Well, this is where Wes Newton's rhythm and confidence will be tested. 99. Now, second 180 for Newton. Yes, it is. Eight. Well, he kicked the previous leg off with a maximum, and that was on his throw. And then through nine very mediocre darts. Now he's got the throw back. Got to do something with it. 96. One treble's okay. Both of these guys, the victories on the European Tour came in single thing in Mervyn's was last year, beat Michael Smith in the final. It was his First win in four attempts at European One finals as he fired in his second 180 of the match. Forty-five. Again, Wes Newton scores a 180 first three darts and then finds himself behind when it comes down to the bottom end of the, the leg. Can get in that treble bed again, though, and that's oh, that's frustrating for him. Ninety-five. Revenue requires seventy-nine. Tops for three-nil. Mervyn King. Game Wes Newton the under there. severe Mervyn. pressure here. Four legged for Wes to throw first. Game on. Well, a good performance from. Mervyn King, I mean, he's been hit with two 180s 59. straight off the bat in the previous two legs, and it's not affected him. He's kept his shape, his form, his height, whatever you like to call it. He's certainly kept it. And he's piling it on Wes Newton now. Five 180s are only three and a bit legs into this. It could be another. 140. Mervyn King was actually staying in a camper van in Risa last time out in the European 80. Tour and that looked like it might have been bound for the treble bed before it took a deflection and ended up on the floor. Yeah, he does like his camper van. He's not bought it this time. Oh, he's, he hasn't. he's driven 60. here, but he hasn't brought the camper van. I think he's afforded himself the luxury of a hotel room. He also likes his motorbikes as well. Yeah, he dro drove his motorbike to Sindelfingen and that turned out to be a good omen. Now then, Mervyn King. 140. Well, it's on 40 and he's down to 101 on the Newton throw and all of a sudden after Wes Newton saw Gerwin try 6-0 in his opening round 
But here he comes again. It's another maximum. Three consecutive legs. Where can you sit them? And he's lost the previous two. He could be allowed to lose this one as well. Mervyn King, 101. Well, that leaves himself 76. Needed the treble for double eight. Well, we've seen a lot of players go that way. Um, I, I, sorry, I don't agree with that way. But Merv is the exception of the rule. He likes the 16s. Now, double 16 for Wesley. Yeah, he finally puts a leg on the board. But it is only to, to hold his throw. throw first. Game on. Oh, vital dart there for Wes Newton. Not sure there was a way back against Mervyn King at 4-0 down. As it is, he's got a foothold in the game. 96. With the 101 then, going back to that, if you're going to the 25 bullseye and you hit the 25, for me, then the shot is double-double. Going for a treble is half the size of the double is pointless. Um, but Mervyn's not a guy who goes double-double too often. There you see, that is superb from Mervyn King. 140. And it's going up. 120 first nine and 100 average overall is great. I mean, 96 overall average for Wes Newton is good, but... But when, you, when you're on a downer, is, is that what happens? 63. You know, you, like we see Mark Walsh earlier on, he's on a bit of a downer. It's the consistency. You know, it's no good going 180 and following it with a 60 and then a 45. You've got to follow it up. And this is what Mervyn King has done. He's hitting big skill, scores consistently all the time. And he's down to a finish after three visits to the board again here. It could be another maximum for Wes Newton. Well, it is. He's not down to a finish himself. So, Mervyn King has got plenty of time to see this off. Wes Newton has hit four 180s in this match already. He is likely to go 4 1 down. And Christian Kist's probably the most unlucky person we've seen. He averaged 101 and still got beaten in the first round. 60. Maybe you require 60. Just yeah, 60. See, not, not a lot of pressure there, is there? Mm. You know, even if Mervyn misses two darts at tots, but the way he's playing, you can't see him missing the two. Game's on the fifth leg. No, the first Mervyn one was a perfect guide. Six leg is the to throw first. Game on. And it's 4-1 to Mervyn King. And now a real up here, uphill task for Wes Newton. Ninety-five. Winner of this one will face Mark Webster, who is superb in seeing off Steve Beaton earlier on today. One hundred. Ninety-nine. A couple more games for the afternoon session after this one. Robert Thornton, the eleventh seed against Dimitri Vandenberg, who was excellent in his opening round win. And of course, one hundred was against Christian Kiss, who I've already mentioned, beaten six-three despite Kiss under one average. And then Ian White, Alan Norris, potentially a cracker. 40. Just the forty from Mervyn King, though. Wes Newton looking to get a second leg on the board. And claw his way back into this one against a man who has raced out the blocks and has been pretty relentless so far. Sixty. Nice right, Sixty-six. Oh, double eighty once. Fifty-eight. Mervyn nowhere near though, back on 207. So Wes Newton will come back and have another go, looking at double four. 100. Well, he doesn't want to miss eight. again. If he puts this just on the outside, if it's not in the double, now that's pretty good. The way Wes's darts kick up, yeah, it leads the second is. dart straight into the double Some four. That's exactly what has happened. First. Game on. But Wes is going to have to break Mervyn King on two separate occasions. 59. 140. Oh, there we have the averages. Mervyn King still with a very good front nine average. Overall average has just come down a bit. 
140. Yeah, not much between them, but it's just the break of throw in the second leg that has really given Mervyn 100. the advantage in this one. And it's one that is not let go of as yet. There is an opportunity for Newton if King fails 100. to find a trouble with his last dart, which he does fail to do so. Well, he may get nine darts from 2 6 1. He may only need six. 108. And that is a fifth 180 for Wes Newton. And only in the seventh leg here, potential 11 darter coming in for the two time major champion, a two time major finalist, I should say. 145. Wes Newton 81. Been a great 180, but now he's got to take the 81. Two darts at double 12 for a break of throw. Oh, 75. what a chance. Go on begging for Wes Newton. And what a crucial time to miss two darts and a double. And you fear that Mervyn King on the double top. Well. Game shot on seventh leg. Well, Mervyn, Mervyn King. King makes it 5-2. And you feel that that Game little on. passage of play there may prove to be fatal for Wes Newton's hopes. He did all the hard work on the 11 dart. I missed the double 12, missed the double six, and King steps in to seal it with a 15 darter of his own. It is a long way back 45. for Wes Newton now. And you'd put Worthing King into that grinder type of category of player, wouldn't you? I mean, he, he never plays a bad game. You know, it don't matter if he's got backache, leg ache, kill his tendon ache. His golf is rubbish. He still gets up there and throws good darts. I, I remember in the nice final step. of the Dutch Darts Masters in Veldhoven, he took on Michael van Gerwen and he could barely walk. And he still averaged 105, I believe it was. As Wes Newton, well, looking for a 177 to add to the five 180s he's hit already. Unable to do so. Again, I mean, 100. I know he lost the Max up at the World Championships, but Max still had to throw 98, 99 average, and it was over five sets, and that was again when with Murphy had slipped disc and he could barely stand up. 100. The man is an absolute machine. 97. Where's your equal? 67. Well, it is to hold on to his throw. Needs the double top. Missed it. So Mervyn King now a chance to wrap this game up here and now. Be looking at the 18s. Travel 18 will leave him the bullseye. 48. Where's your equal? 40. Double top for Newton to close the gap again. Double ten. This has probably got to go, and it hasn't, and Mervyn King should get at least one match dart. He'll be looking for treble 14 for his favourite double 16. He's not had a go at that all game. He'll have to settle for a dart at double top for 6-2. 54. Not very far off, 20. but just far enough for Wes Newton. Can you keep yourself in this? Game yes, he eight, can. Man. It's 5 3. One match dart has been Mervyn missed by first. Mervyn King, but Game on. it is still a long road back for Wes Newton. And that looks perfect. That looks perfect. 140. Yeah, the two darts missed in that previous leg. 140. Well, he could have gone out in 11 or 12 darts. This possibly cost him the match if Mervyn King wraps it up here. But that's how tight the game is, Dan. You know, we're breeding a, a great tough dart player right the way throughout. And if you miss, we, we do see games where you think, oh, why couldn't I have played that in the pole? That happens now and again. But uh, you know what you're going to get when you're playing Mervyn King, and that's going to be a tough game. Yeah, sometimes you will go up there and play somebody who's averaging 80, but you can't go up there expecting that you're going to get that. You're going to expect they're going to average in the high 90s of 100, because that's the kind of standard these guys expect of themselves. Sometimes they'll average more than that. 
to 161 for Mervyn King. We saw Justin Pipe take this out earlier on. We won't see it from Mervyn King, but he is going to put a dent in it. And it's a great setup shot from the Where's King. Well, Where's 130. Newton? 130. Well, he did exactly the same. I think it was leg three. Oh. oh that's just where he's at at the moment, you know. That just drifted to that five. 90. Even a fat 20 would have given him a shot at the bullseye. But Mervyn King stepping up, looking at double 18 Enjoy for the match and completes a 6-3 victory. Wes Newton, well, look, it was a decent display from him. He battled away. Game of the afternoon session as these two duking out to fight their way through to a place in the last 16 of the European Darts Open. The winner of our final match of the afternoon session, Ian White or Alan Norris, awaits the victor. Robert Thornton, very nearly taking on someone who's actually smaller than him. Not actually the case. Might just be Dimitris Quiff, though. Dan Dawson in the commentary box for this one. And alongside me, Rob Malarkey. Yeah, very good afternoon once again. Robert Thornton, two-time quarter-finalist on the European Tour this year. Capable of better, he's seeded 11th. And I'll tell you what, he's up against it, I think, today. Vandenberg is the outsider with the bookies for this one. But he beat the former Lakeside champion, Christian Kist, 6-3 yesterday. The 6-3, though, doesn't really tell the full story. He broke his opponent three times. He averaged 100. He had 75% on his doubles. A 1-1-1 checkout, three 180s and an 11 dart leg to boot as well. So all in all, there was plenty to like about that performance yesterday by Vandenberg. And a win for him here today would represent his best ever run in a European Tour event. He made the second round in Gibraltar, has never reached the third round, or at least hasn't this year, I should say. So Vandenberg will have his backers today. He's a very capable youngster. He's clearly in the mood. He's a confident sort as well. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First and we've seen a couple of upsets already first. today. Beaten, Game gone. On. The biggest, though, the exit of Van der Pass. So maybe Thornton could be wary of that as well. Throwing first in the opening leg. And we're underway. Yeah, one of the top performers 60. in the opening round. Dimitri van der Berg, as you rightly said. Christian Kist averaged 100 and lost. Only yellow class and average more. He made it through. 100.7 average for yellow class. And he's on the way this evening against Dave Chisnell in one of these standout ties of the second round. We've already seen some belters today, though. Some very impressive performances wow. from the likes of Terry Jenkins, Mark Webster, Mervyn King, we've just seen. Can Robert Thornton follow suit? Seeded 11th here. 45. Well, look of anguish on the face of Thornton there. What a round, Thornton! As uh, Vandenberg just edges in front. Thornton, though, with the advantage of throwing first, so should get down to a finish first. Or maybe not. 60. I say should do. Yeah, Vandenberg hasn't really punished uh, Thornton there, but he is down to a finish of 1-4-2. 16 will leave him. His favourite double top. Absolutely deadly on double top when he's on form is Robert Thornton. It was certainly his ability to hit it that. Took him to that UK Open title back in 2012, beat Phil Taylor in the final. Well, he doesn't like double top today. He's chasing all over the board for double five. And Vandenberg has a window of opportunity here. Takes a big, deep breath. Could do it in two darts here. Double 12. Taking a moment or two to compose himself, the young Belgian. 
And it pays dividends to buy this time because he takes out the double 12. It's an 84 checkout. And he has broken in the very first game. Well, it was his finishing that got him to this stage, seeing off Christian Kist. He hit 75% of his doubles, but the only two darts he missed on the same visit is when he pinned it with the last dart anyway. So, in terms of missing opportunities and allowing your opponent back to the board, it just didn't happen. Well, if that continues, Robert Thornton it could be in a spot above that. Yeah, 6 3 as well, the score. And as I said, it, it doesn't really tell the whole story. It sounds like there was just one break, but there were three breaks for uh, Vandenberg as well. Trouble was, he was broken twice himself by kissed in that one but he showed genuine signs of class yesterday and he's showing a lot of class here as well on his own throat Vandenberg was a two to one shot there or thereabouts to uh, win this one seemed a generous prize to me early days though well that is the question mark isn't it as you said not made it through to the last 16 of a European Tour event as yet. We know these young lads can put in a good performance. It's doing two, three, four in a row that will yeah. separate the men from the boys. Could we see him do a Benito van der Pass and go all the way to the final? He's not made a quarter final on the senior tour as yet. Needed a treble 18 for a shot at the bullseye, but he finds it with his last dart to leave him double 16. Ooh, now then, Robert Thornton. Nah. <laughs> he saw the grimace there. And he's in position, but Vandenberg has three darts at double 16 here. Can't afford to squander this sort of chance. And he's getting closer. And it's very, very close. Well, it'll be settled down nicely after those two uh, opening legs. If he was feeling any nerves or showing any signs of frailty, you wouldn't know it. Well, certainly the finishing appears, appears to be there. And if that's the case, well, the longer it goes on, the more trouble Robert Thornton's going to be in. 43. The dream maker doing exactly that, making his own dreams this weekend. Thornton, though, looking to crush those dreams with an iron fist. With a 180. We must be approaching 100 180s for the weekend so far. Well, this will get us closer. Ooh, no, it won't. It must be 80 up. We'll get a graphic up. I'll get the guys on it. There you go, 88. Thank you. Just the 12 more. Could do that in this afternoon session. Oh, well, I think that pinged out a couple 20, 60 points on the floor there, effectively. But again, it's on the Thornton throw, so no particular damage done here. In fact, Thornton with that treble one is making life difficult, but he's in a good position now to uh, get off the mark. Make 89. That 89. There you go. Well, anybody who's back 200 180s this weekend might, just might, have a bit of joy. We're running out of matches, though, of course. So. We do have some heavy hitters on the way. Michael Smith kicks off the evening session. That's against Mensor Sulevich. There you go. Almost again. Good start though from Vandenberg. I was about to say, all he needs to do now is hold his throw, but like I say, easier said than done. And he was broken twice yesterday, and Thornton's in the mood now. Look at this. Robert Thornton is in business all of a sudden. Well, is he finding his range, the man from Ayrshire? Good response though from Belgian, the young Belgian, I should say. Oh, now, now, now. Oh, a cry of anguish from the crowd. They're desperate to see a nine darter. Twice this weekend we've seen players on it. Robert John Rodriguez, six perfect darts. Mark Webster, six perfect darts. 
just an 81 from Vandenberg it's an opportunity for Thornton that's okay 121 significantly easier than 140 he only needs one treble for a shot at the ball but Vandenberg he wanted to go for the 18's route mm. 92 Sets it up all right. But can Thornton take this out? Treble 17 for a shot at the bullseye. Doesn't get the treble. And the Robert Thornton constant critique of his own shots continues. So 16, double 16 for a 3 1 lead. Double 18 needs. Double 80 gets. Once again, and look what it means to him. What a show of emotion that was from Vandenberg. He kisses the dartboard as he retrieves his arrows. Another fist pump there for his fans. And once again, it's another visit where Dimitri Vandenberg gets a dart at a double and doesn't allow his opponent back to the board. He is yet to do that this weekend. DVB the chant from the fans inside the Maritime Arena here in Dusseldorf. Sixty-two. Wow, it crept into the one that second dart. Again, my eyes deceived me there. 49. Now Vandenberg not punishing Thornton there. Thornton's just lost his way momentarily here, struggling for trebles. One in 59. six for Bob. Seeded 11 here. Quarter finalist in Hildesheim, quarter finalist in Munich. Made the third round in Riesa three weeks ago, lost 6 4 to Ian White. 100. Yeah, kind of strange that Robert Thornton's never done it on the European Tour to the extent that he's done it on the Pro Tour. Yeah. I mean, he's not gone past the quarter-final at all in the European events, and that looks like 60 on the floor to me. Well, he's recovered very well. It leaves him Shanghai. But, I mean, this year already he's made a, a semi-final, a final, four quarter-finals on the Pro wow. Tour as Dimitri Vandenberg fires in another maximum. That's his second. Wow. A fourth of the match, and it puts pressure on this. Needs the treble, Robert Thornton. Gets it. Double top. It's his favourite. And that's why. And he'll have a little celebration. It's not quite as flamboyant as Dimitri Vandenberg. You've earned it, Robert. Yeah, he needed that. My word, 3-2 could easily be 4-1. It was a terrific application of pressure from Vandenberg, and so is that. Fifth 180 of the match. Well, I do remember back in Austria last year, Robert Thornton came up against Roby John Rodriguez, another up-and-coming young European player who likes a bit of a celebration. And it got on his nerves as Dimitri Vandenberg oh, five perfect darts and a shrug of the shoulders well he's in possession for a 4-2 lead mm, bit of a stumble there though Robert Thornton now then hits the 180 of his own and despite Dimitri Vandenberg kicking things off with five perfect darts in this leg Thornton is probably just about favorite for it to break back but here comes Vandenberg another one of those look at this what a finish this would be oh, oh my word 126 checkout Two treble 19, double six. And this incredible run of finishing from Dimitri Vandenberg this weekend continues. 12 data, 4 2. And Thornton, he's throwing everything at the young Belgian, but he's getting a low back as well. Absolutely astonishing that sixth leg. Five perfect darts for Vandenberg to start things off. Thornton hits back with a 180. And then Vandenberg checks out with a 1 2 6. Absolutely brilliant. Six 180s in this match, three apiece. 
Thornton is landing plenty of punches, big ones as well, but Vandenberg is just jabbing right back at him. DVB, the champ goes up once again. 4-2 the lead. 43. Not a brilliant start to leg seven. Thornton is not out of this. He is a street fighter who will keep going. Robert Thornton is 4-2 down, and he is averaging 110. This is madness. But it just goes to show, if you average 100 or thereabouts, and you take your chances, you can win any dog. Think back to Raymond Van Barneveld at the World Championships when he played Adrian Lewis. Adrian Lewis threw a nine darter at him. He was throwing ridiculous stuff, but Barney mm. just kept plodding away. 99 average, ran about the 100 mark, and taking his chances. He managed to keep holding his throw. He went all the way to a deciding set, and one poor leg from Lewis cost him that match. We saw RVB do it a number of times in the Premier League. Phil Taylor threw 115 average, <laughs> and Raymond Van Barneveld still managed to come away with a win. Vandenberg is doing a Barney on Robert Thornton here. Wow, DVB Thornton. is doing an RVB. Could be the MVP. 85, Robert, you require oh, it's a scratchy 51. seventh leg this from Vandenberg though. Thornton closing in. in. The seventh man, Robert Thornton. And it's 4-3. Still has the break. The Terrific match. High quality, <laughs> high octane, highly absorbing. Is this the opportunity, though? Is this the opportunity for Robert Thornton to hit back at Dimitri Vandenberg? <laughs> it is, and you can see. A little the snarl. The fist. Yeah, a little snarl on the face of Thornton as well, that punishing Vandenberg for his opening 59 salvo. 60. 59 is backed up by a 60 as well. Great chance now for the number 11 seed to press on and just ram home his advantage here. So far isn't failing or is failing to do so, but it's a good recovery with the treble 17. Now, Dimitri, what have you got? Plenty. What have you got? Mm, could have been better. It was a good first start. He had lots of room to work with there didn't fill it up well he wants to stay on the treble 20 because a ton would leave him 170 60. very very difficult after those first two darts just the 60 and maybe maybe Dimitri Vandenberg has got a way back into this now oh that looks good it looks very good it looks perfect Dimitri Vandenberg just when you think Thornton might be turning things around hits back with his fourth 180 of the match. This isn't over yet, though. Thornton is there, ready to pounce if Vandenberg doesn't take this out. His finishing has been spectacular all weekend. Well, he's not going to give himself a dart at a double. He is going to set it up well. Robert, you require 110. So Thornton with a great chance here, oh, well, still has a chance. It hasn't any more, and you can see what it means. I thought for a moment he was going to throw that dart into the crowd as he uh, turned away for a moment just to gather some composure. He knows that was a really, really good chance to level things up. Vandenberg with three darts at double 16 to move to within one leg of a place in the third round. Double four, nervous, reprieve for Thornton. First time this weekend that has happened where Vandenberg has had darts at double and he has not taken it out on that visit. Thornton, single 16, double top, one dart in his hand. There are those who would have put their mortgage on that. Three missed doubles already for Vandenberg. And three more. Score. He's busted there. Robert, you require it's been pretty much Surely. perfection all weekend from Vandenberg when it comes to killing legs off. He's had two visits there it's where he's failed to do it, and Robert Thompson is the kind of man you cannot afford to do that against. It's four apiece now. That's the break back Thompson wanted. He has the throw. 
in two of the remaining three legs. Despite messing about in the doubles there, Thornton's still averaging over 100. It's around about 103 and going up. Yeah, Vandenberg there, good illustration of what you were saying before, hitting a fourth 180 of the match, but just unable to make any impact with his doubles. It was wayward when he needed to be deadly accurate. 123. Good recovery from him, but he knows he's up against it. This will be a, a real test of character for the 21-year-old. We know this bloke's got loads. Look at that. Only two legs going longer than five visits to the board. And look at this. Vandenberg again. Well, that's just what he needed, exactly when he needed it most as well. Thornton, though, still in with a shout here. Important last dart there from Dimitri Vandenberg gets him down to a two dart finish. Robert Thornton is not going to take out the 1 6 1, but he is going to leave himself pretty handily placed. Now it can be awkward this. Treble 20 would give him two darts at double 19. 78 left. He doesn't get a dart at a double. So, Robert Thornton, 62, Robert to go into the lead. For the first time in the match. 12 leads, tops, his favourite, or supposedly his favourite. Oh, it's not his friend at the moment. Not his friend at all. Vandenberg. For another break. Getting closer. Thornton yes. looks on powerless as Vandenberg leaps with delight. Little jab of the finger on his temple there. Telling everybody that he has the game plan and he has the mindset to deal with this. Playing with his hands and playing it between the ears as well here, Vandenberg. He's gone off for a walk. He's gone off for a walk. He's orchestrating the crowd. Well, Thornton won't like this. Oh, oh wow. Yep, I bet his heart's racing here. Biggest leg of his career, you could argue this. Certainly one of them. Well, the crowd on their feet now. Robert Thornton, the back of the stage. I'm sure that little display from Dimitri Vandenberg will have fired him up a little bit. Is it going to see him produce his best at the business end of this one? Well, that's a start. The Thorn has got his game face on, needs to win the last two legs, or he will be going home from Dusseldorf. Dimitri Vandenberg finds one treble, but Thornton's effectively stolen the darts, and he's back in the treble bed again. 85. Could have done with another treble there. Just to ask questions of a young player who looks as though he is dealing with the occasion here. Just when you think Dimitri Vandenberg might have run his race, wow. maybe Thornton's getting on top of him, he hits back. He's done it two or three times in this match already. It's been very, very impressive after that incredible battle in the opening round with Christian Kist. And uh, 80 does get him to a finish, but it's not the easiest. So Robert Thornton's still the favourite for this leg, and he certainly is now. He certainly is now. Wow, oh, well, he's missed a big number there, and that's going to cost him a dart and a double if he returns. Oh, he might lovely. not. Well, 128. not to be at the moment for Vandenberg. Thornton surely can't look this gift horse in the mouth. Surely can't afford to. There you go. There's your.
And is there anybody who is doubting Robert Thornton's ability to take out double 20 in this absorbing encounter? There's your answer. It's his friend once again. Five all, another break. And he's hit it every single leg that he's won, Robert Thornton. Can he get the job done here? A 12 darter is more than likely going to win it. Be barring just magic from Dimitri Vandenberg. And that's a good three darts to start things off as well for Thornton. This isn't bad either, though, from Vandenberg. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I said it was barring magic from Dimitri Vandenberg. He has started off perfectly. His sixth 180 of the match. Oh, he needed that treble as well there, Thornton. Surely he can't. Why not finish it off with a nine darter, Dimitri? Go on. Go on, sir. Fill your boots. Help yourself. Oh. Unlucky. Just the wrong side of the wire with the second dart. But he's got a 50 point advantage. Thornton. Oh, now then, Dimitri Vandenberg. He's just got his 45. nose in front. He's stolen the darts of the deciding leg. Dimitri Vandenberg. Can he close this out now? It's his game to lose. 59. Mm. It's good counting, isn't it? Very pressure situation. The young guy's at least done his maths correctly. He's left yeah. himself a finish. Wow! <laughs> Ton 40 gives Robert Thornton a two dark finish. Will he get the chance? This would be a spectacular finale. Not to be for Dimitri Vandenberg. Needed the treble 20 to start things off. 60. And he's still Robert over 100 Ryan points 90. away from victory. Thornton, 91. He's going Takes out the 25, sorry, Dan. Oh, he's hit the treble 16. It leaves double nine. My, my word. Absolutely sensational match. It doesn't get any better than that. Anybody wondering why darts is such a popular occasion just needs to look back on that match. 11 legs of absolute top quality. Sporting drama there, breathless at times, hugely absorbing, a high octane encounter. A big embrace for Dimitri Vandenberg, who came so, so close to pulling off another upset. His 11 seed surviving a huge onslaught from the Belgian youngster, but as we said in commentary, his day will surely come on that evidence. Ian White and Alan Norris have got a Lot to live up to in this one. The uh, benchmark has been set this weekend, especially by that Thornton Vandenberg match. Uh, but this is the final match of the afternoon session. Ian White seeded eight, a man who reached the semi finals in Riza three weeks ago, hoping to go one better, maybe two better, perhaps by uh, winning the tournament itself. But he's up against a man who was uh, a very effective performer yesterday in his 6 2 win against Andy Smith. It's Chuck Norris, Alan Norris, his opponents in this one, Rod Harrington uh, alongside me. Rod, uh, the Thornton match, first of all, what a brilliant performance by both players. Yes, unbelievable. I, I think you, you've got to hand it to, to Robert for digging in deep as well. But uh, that's what these youngsters are all about. They're lively, they're brilliant players, and they're not scared of anybody. I mean, Robert, Robert Thornton's a seasoned professional, you know, a major winner. And uh, we say it so many times, the future is very rosy for Ladies these youngsters. And gentlemen, first leg, Alan, from first but this game here... I mean, I can't, I, I can't split them. I would have had them five to six to two, uh, for sure. I six think we're going to see over the nine point five legs in this match, which is a little bit. If you're having a tiffle, is um, one of the best ones. Sometimes there ain't always value in backing 100. a winner. If you look at the other markets the bookmakers are doing, then there is some value laying around, and I think over on the legs is certainly the value in this match. Fifty-five. So uh, Ian White finally putting together a decent run in Europe. He had three second round defeats, no wins in the first three tournaments of the European calendar. Broke his duck in Venray by finally winning a match. He beat Jeffrey de Zvan 6-4, but then went out to Kim Hybrex, but then put that good run together in uh, Riza. It was long overdue, eventually losing 6-3 to Michael Smith, who uh, of course went on to win the trophy. Smith on stage tonight, by the way. Seeded fourth here in Dusseldorf. Mervyn King awaiting the winner of this one, who safely threw after beating Wes Newton 
a couple of matches ago, 6 3. Yes, that was a good solid performance by Irving King. Whereas Nick just missing, you know, a couple of legs there. He's missed darts at doubles and missed a big number now and again. And uh, that's cost him. But when you're playing someone as, cons as Mer consistent as Mervyn King, then uh, you're always opening yourself up to it. But at the moment, both these players are fairly consistent. One hundred and thirty-seven. You only require one hundred and fifty-seven. Well, an outside chance of a, a break here for Ian White. Mm, the chance is on hold, of course, now, but uh, Norris with 90 to find. Well, he's found 50 of them, double top. Well, that's brilliant. Nicely done. Well, we call that the aggressive route. Normally, it's the big 20s or the treble 20, but he's gone bullseye double top and hit it in two, and that's an exceptional finish from Alan Norris. Mm, a good solid start from uh, White as he looks to respond. 50. Well, the last game of the afternoon session here. Another packed audience this evening. 123. Even hotter. It's absolutely boiling up there this yeah. afternoon and this evening. Could be even, although well, the sun will drop, I know. Uh, the heat will still stay in the hall and with the extra people coming in. It's lucky we're not situated in the hall, blowing <laughs> all the hot air as well we do <laughs> over the course of the afternoon and evening. One hour. Yeah, the person operating the uh, sausage grill hasn't got a good job today. I uh, envy anybody has been stuck in a kitchen on a day like this. Well, double top for Ian White to level it up. 48. Well, he's going to come back. Well, Ian White here has avoided double five. Maybe a sensible it's ploy, and it is. Eight. Good thinking that from uh, Ian White, just to avoid the to danger first. of splitting it with the fives. And we are level at one apiece. Bit of a lull in the crowd, as you can hear as well, after the drama of the wow. Thornton Vandenberg wow. match. Yes, and uh, young Dimitri did give it a, a little bit, didn't he? Well, I just he... wondered whether Bob might have uh, took exception to a bit of that when he started. During a match as well, to then move all the way over to the other side of the stage and whip the crowd up. Not really the done thing at times, is it? No, it isn't. And if you remember, when we was in Salzburg, um, Rodriguez did it too, <laughs> Robert Thornton wow. as well. But not the right thing to do to a glass region. <laughs> Lucky he is a young man. <laughs> yeah. 44. You only require 161. Yeah, sometimes, um, you know, whipping the crowd up, not the greatest of things to do against your opponent. It's all well and good if you're walking back from the hockey, but to move all the way over to the side, the side of the stage. Keeping your opponent waiting as well. Well, Alan Norris here. This is very neat and tidy indeed. Well, a chance here for Ian White to break the throw. Absolutely. I'll go 20 for double 18, I think. Thirty-eight. 
I don't understand that because of the nine through. Yeah, but, uh, I was thinking that. Surely it's better to go 16 tops and then at least if you miss the tops, you've got a double 10. And not a fan of that. And, uh, well, Norris has punished him anyway. Yes, you're right. I mean, the double top coming down to the double 10, especially right-handed, it literally is if you stand there and point. That's where the double 10 is. So it isn't the hard challenge. But from the 18s to One the 9s, everybody struggles on it. Now, a chance here for Norris to post his first One maximum round, of the match, not to be. Hit five 180s yesterday in that 6 2 win over the Pie Man, Andy Smith. We see him White dominating the front nine. Finds himself, and the overall average, but finds himself 2 1 down. One he, he had a chance to go 2 1 up himself, two darts. Mm. And now he could find himself 3 1 down. Well, Norris is playing only his second European Tour event. He made his debut in Venray, where he lost 6-4 to Jelle Klassen in round one. So this already is his best ever run in Europe. Beat Darren Webster 6-2 in the third round of qualifying as well. One hundred. Alan require 98. Didn't play badly against Jelle as well in, uh, in Holland. 86. In mm, well, he might come back. Double uh, six for the break. Yes, White with work he, to do. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, and White needs to take this out. And he needs that bullseye. Oh, it was a bit of a poor showing at the bullseye from White. And now, Norris. Going to get three clear darts. Getting closer. Game and there the he is. Leg. He has Alan the break. The flag, Alan, the throw first. Game on. And he's halfway to a place in the third round, the last 16 tomorrow, where he would play Mervyn King. Six well, to go back to leg three. But Ian White had two clear darts and a double to take that 2 1 lead, and that would have given him the break of throw. And while he was still thinking about that, Norris has stepped up. Broke the throw of Ian White. Now he leads 3 1. Just shows you how quickly the game can change. 125. Well, we've had a little bit of everything this morning, or this afternoon, I should say, in this uh, first session of the day. And like yesterday, the checkouts have been of a very, very high class. Things will only get better as well. On stage tonight, the Reza champion Michael Smith, the number two seed James Wade is second up against Dirk van Dovenbode. Chizzy against Klassen Looking is to one, one to watch out for as well. And of course, the world number one, Michael van Gerwen, a four-time winner on the European Tour this year against the Welshman Jamie Lewis. Van der Voorst on stage two, Whitlock, Peter Wright, Defending champion is here as well. Final match of the wow. night as Norris finally posts his first maximum of the match. Well, what a time to do it. Couldn't have picked a better time to do it. Two darts away from a 4 1 lead. Nine double 16. No, one tops is his preferred route. Needs to be closer. Well. Maybe a chance here for White to uh, break back. Can't afford to squander this opportunity. Will it be 3-2? Will it be 4-1? He's hit the 10. Double 16. One dart at it. Made to pay here. Could be made to pay. Mm, he's got uh, a big reprieve here, here Ian White. 32. Yes, a big there. Missed there for oh, Norris. 
White's got to make him play. He's got to get himself back into this game. This would be for a break of throw. 16. And he's got to miss three darts and a double as well. Wow. Alan, you require 10. Just not convincing at all. Well, one player can take complete control and the other one can get himself back in the game. Oh. No score. Ian requires 16. Well, one from 10 so far for Ian White on doubles. Three from 14 for Alan Norris. Double four. Game shot and and finally, finally. Six leg in and throw first. Ian White breaks Game back on. and it's 3 2. Norris prowling around at the back of the stage knows. Well, if goes, right yeah, back yeah. In, yeah. if he goes and loses this match, you, you've got to say that leg five was where he lost it. To go four one up, you know, not many people well, come back from four one up. Do realise that it happens, but percentage wise, it doesn't that much. Ian White now thinks, well, I've had a bit of luck here. Let's move on now. One hundred and twenty-three. A scratchy sixth leg from both players. 64. Neither taking the game by the scruff of the neck here. William White may get six darts from 260. One hundred. Well, Norris, a minimum of a ton. But that's a good first dart. Should find the treble from there. One hundred. And does. Require 160. Well, we see Terry Jenkins take this out earlier this afternoon. Ian White won't. 60. Alan, you require 100. So Norris in a good position to break back straight away here. 60. But failing to take Ian the opportunity again. 100. Needs to see this first dart go in the trouble 20. Will he go double top, double top, or start the treble 20? He's gone for the two double tops. 21. Oh, and he's hit the one as well. Well, well, well. Game shown at six leg. And Norris does break back Alan for a 4-2 lead. Seventh leg, Alan, to front first. Game on. Well, it's not quite the high-octane encounter that we had in the Thornton Vandenberg match. It was always asking a lot for these two to maintain the drama. But Alan Norris has got the crowd on their feet once again with that opening turn 80. Another hammer for Ian White. Yes, it's not the performance from Ian White that we expected to be quite honest. I thought he was going to be a lot more consistent than he has been. Made it relatively easily for easy for Alan Norris to get a good lead. One hundred. Ninety two. Well, the averages are far from spectacular. 100. Alan, you require 170. The finishing has left a bit to be desired as well at times today. 134. But I don't suppose Norris will mind all that if he can book his place in the last 16 tomorrow. Well, That's all he get, can do. Yes, he's going to get three clear darts at double 18. Then you would feel the way the game is going. 36. And he's not going to let a 5 2 and lead. Let slip. And Norris, they play a unit throw first. Game on. 
And I think you have to go back to leg three when Ian White had two clear darts to break the throw of Norris and to go take a 2-1 lead himself. Well, that's when, for me, the game has been lost by Ian White. There's the milestone, 100 maximums of the weekend so far. As we effectively approach the halfway stage of the weekend as well. Well, two and eighties in this leg for Ian White, but it is the next leg. That's the important one because he's going to have to break the Norris throat as long as he cleans this up. Eighteen for double top. Next to the eleven dart leg. Now he could have he could have done with saving one of those one eighties to kick this leg off with. Yeah, two one eighties in the leg is great, but on your throw. Sometimes you don't need them. 43. There's the door ajar a little bit for Ian White. Well, it's something that could be exploited. 43 from Norris to start things off in leg nine. Yeah, by far the most efficient leg of the match so far. Just that 113 dart leg from Norris. Well, White has got the throw now. Needs to find another treble to really punish. Yeah, the trouble is he had a chance there, but it still leaves the door open for Norris to come in with a big score, which he isn't going to do. Six That's eight. nine darts mm. without a treble. On, I mean, on, on a, a mega important leg for Norris, he's stepping up with the throw to uh, go through the next round, and he just hasn't done it. No, nine darts to score, one, four, six. One, Not good enough eight. at this stage of the match. Might get away with it. But White's in a good position to break back once again. 58. Can't buy a treble at the moment. No, that's 12. So White's going to get at least six darts from here. Probably nine. 60. Well, well, well. It's all unravelled here for Alan Norris with the finishing line in sight. Yes, unbelievable. 15 darts without a treble for Alan Norris. But Ian White has is, is thrown six darts himself and only scored about 100. So a big score here from Norris. 45. Oh. 18 uh, darts. By a treble. Without a treble. And, well, the less said about that leg for Alan Norris, the better. Ian White does have the break. Norris has, of course, broken White already today. If he can do it again, he's through to the last 16, but Ian White has his tail up here a little bit. Well, it'll be interesting to see how that last leg has affected Norris. Because he threw 18 darts without hitting the treble and made it very easy for Ian White. 16. 21, 21 darts, darts plus the leg before as well, whatever. That's incredible. Ian White's probably thinking, I cannot believe it. Wow. Yeah, at long last. Probably hit three now. 100. Well, as long as Ian White stays straight. We could be going to a decider and anything, although Norris will throw first in that decider, anything could happen. But at one time at 5-3 up, you think, you know, you, you should not be losing this game from no. here. And you can see it in his face, he's just looking very, very edgy and anxious, isn't he? Needs to just try and find some composure from somewhere. Not out of this leg, though. One round, 21. 
That's put Wise in a good position. Norris 129 behind. 60. And he's chipped only 60 off that deficit as well. Well, that's only two trebles in 30 darts at the board. Well, if you have backed over on legs, then you are certainly quids in. It's more like it from Norris, but it could be too little too late as far as this leg is concerned. Ian White has three darts at double 16, and we are into a decider. Not sure if throwing first is any particular advantage for Norris right now, the way he's throwing. And once again, he fails to find a treble. That is unbelievable. The way he played yesterday, the way he started the game off scoring, you'd have thought, well, no problem at all. But that's four trebles in 36 starts for Alan Norris. But White has not punished him. Flip of a coin job, this one. As far as predicting a winner is concerned. No, it's White that can't hit a treble. Just amazing how the tide turns so quickly in a game like this. One hundred. Well. 155 is Norris's cushion here. Wow, oh, he needed that. He needed that. Yeah, it kind of gets him back to more or less level pegging darts wise. Well, I'm right on 40. So anything but a 140 is not going to be enough for Ian White. And then he's got to hope, or a 180 would really put the pressure on. So it needs the 140. 83. That's certainly the 83 is there. So six darts for Alan Norris to finally wrap this game up. Oh, he's looking for the uh, treble 14 there to leave tops. He's only found a single 14, but he sets it up nicely for the next visit, which will come his way. White, all he can do is put some pressure on here. Well, especially with the way that Norris has been finishing of late as well. Yes, I mean, he, well, he's got to hope that Norris comes inside this double four. Getting closer. And my, oh my, Alan Norris is a very, very lucky man to be in the last 16 tomorrow. He looks to be in a very good position when he led by five legs to two. Credit to Ian White for fighting back to five all. Missed doubles are plenty. 21 darts without a treble at one stage as well for Alan Norris at the business end of that one. And just when it looks as though Ian White was going to finish him off, Norris found something in reserve, just about enough to get through to face Mervyn King tomorrow in the last 16. Only his second appearance on the European Tour, and he is through to the business end of the weekend tomorrow. Round three. Now, of course, talking of business ends of the tournaments, we have the evening session coming up from 7 o'clock, and what an absolute feast in store tonight. Michael Smith, Riza champion, kicking things off against Mensor Sulovic, James Wade, Kim Hybrex, Vincent van der Voort, Chizzy Zier. So, too, is the defending champion, Peter Wright, Simon Whitlock in the penultimate match of the night. Michael Van Gogh as well on stage, the world number one up against Jamie Lewis. Keep it here at the European Darts Open from 7 o'clock local time here tonight. Qualifying for all these major events, reaching the top 32. Yeah, um, this European tour is fantastic. You get to play in front of a crowd that's all leaving at the moment. And uh, yeah, get to Ali Fala, you know. Enjoy my first year. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Ellen. Ellen Norris. Der hat sich zum Ziel gesetzt in diesem Jahr, den Ali Pelli zu erreichen. Er will bei der WM mit dabei sein in seinem ersten BDC-Jahr. Und er sagt, das war hinten raus eng, das war knapp, aber er hat es geritzt bekommen. Am Ende nicht ganz so viele Triple getroffen, wie er das getan hat. Ihr macht euch schon auf den Weg nach draußen, das ist okay. Ich habe für euch noch mal den